Order and for today's discussion, we will uh, consider four bills uh, with regard to regulating vape and e-cigarettes, heated tobacco products. Um, we've invited the resource persons from the industry, from health groups, from consumers groups. Uh, I'd like to recognize the presence of uh, Senator Amy Marcos with us today. Uh, one of the proponents of the measure also filed a Senate bill. Uh, Senator Cayetano, I understand that she's with us too. Uh, another author, our Majority Leader, Mim uh, Subiri, uh, the Chairman of the Committee on Health, uh, Bongo. Uh, and may I request our Committee Secretary, Jingle, to acknowledge our resource persons for this morning. Uh, Jingle? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, for today's public hearing, we have resource persons from the government sector. We have from the Department of Trade and Industry, Under Secretary Ruth Castello, Mr. Mario Gaudiano, and Engineer Avelino Molina Jr. From the Department of Health, Food and Drug Administration, we have Director General Rolando Enrique Domingo, Engineer Ana Trinidad Rivera, and Ms. Irene Florentino Farinas. From the Department of Foreign Affairs, we have Ms. Christine Sale, Ms. Emma Sarne, Ms. Maria Tanya Gaurano, and Ms. Rain Mendoza. From the private sector, we have from the Better For You Corporation, Jewel Loves Manila, Mr. Carlo Castro, with Mr. Mario Zinampan and Dr. Paul Burbridge. From the Japan Tobacco International Philippines, we have Attorney Jose Paulo Patajo and Mr. Robert, Robert Eugenio. From the Relaxed Technology, we have Mr. Jonathan Nang and Mr. Eddie Swain. From the Philip Morris Fortune Tobacco Corporation, we have Attorney Arnaldo Carino and Ms. Giselle Baker. From the Philippine East Cigarette Industry Association, we have Mr. Joey Dulay. From the Vapors in Philippines, we have Mr. Peter Paul Dator. From the Health Tobacco Control Groups, we have the Child Rights Network, Ms. Antoinette Flores. From the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control Alliance, we have Mr. Romel Ariola. From the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control Program Manager, Southeast Asia Tobacco Control Alliance, we have Dr. Ulysses Doroteo. From the Philippine Academy of Pediatric, Pediatric Pulmonologists, we have Dr. Regina Candonizado. The Philippine College of Chest Physicians, we have Dr. Laina Ong Cabrera. From the Philippine Medical Association, we have Dr. Maria Mercedes Agustin. From the Philippine Pediatric Society Toba Tobacco Control Advocacy Group, we have Dr. Rizalina Gonzalez. From Quit for Good Incorporated, we have Ms. Dr. Lorenzo Mata. We also have key opinion leader, Dr. Raymond Niaura. From the consumer and other groups, we have the Laban Consumer Incorporated, Attorney Victoria Mario de Magiba. From the Nicotine Consumers Union of the Philippines, we have Mr. Antonio Israel. And from Vape for Ako Consumer Group, we have Mr. Jose Ramon Garcia. From the Ad Standards Councils Incorporated, we have Attorney Reggie Pularbal and Attorney Rafael Kalinisan. From the Philippine Legislators Committee on Population and Development Foundation Incorporated, we have Mr. Romeo Dongueto and Ms. Aurora Ochidala. For now, uh, Chair, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Thank, you, Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Jingle. Uh, to begin with, let me first uh, make an opening statement that one, uh, there are four bills under consideration. All of them seek to regulate the industry. There are six major issues for discussion. The first would be age restriction. The second would be an online trade. The third are flavors. The fourth would be health warning. The fifth product notification license to operate or product registration. And the sixth would be jurisdiction or the regulatory agency, okay? 
I think these are the six major points no? uh, for discussion. Okay. Now, having said that, I propose that we go over the matrix or the bill or bills page by page, section by section in the interest of time. No? Now, all of you may have a position paper, uh, comments, remarks on the four bills. We encourage you to submit all your written position papers to the committee secretariat. Would that be fine with everyone? Okay. And then since uh, there's a lot of us today, maybe we can keep our uh, comments brief and straight to the point. Would that be fine with everyone too? Okay, so we'll do it page by page, section by section. But before we begin, may I introduce or may I request also, there might be uh, authors of uh, some of the measures that we're considering today who may want to make an opening statement. So let me first call uh, Senator Cayetano if she's present and ready, and if she's interested to make an opening statement. Uh, Jingle, is uh, Senator Cayetano with us? Sir, uh, she's not yet on board. Okay, maybe later on when she's on board. No? Uh, what about uh, Majority Leader Mick Subiri? Would you like to make an opening statement? Is he with us right now? Sir, padating pa lang din po. Wala pa po. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, let's begin on the first page. So page one, uh, maybe we there might not be a need to discuss the short title. So can we move to section two? I'd like to recognize also our minority leader, minority leader Frank Dillon, who's with us this morning. Thank you, Frank, for being with us this morning. Okay. Uh, Good morning, so Mr. Chair. I'm actually here. I had I was. Uh, I be uh, but I yes. Hi, good sure. morning. I couldn't turn on my video. Can yeah. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We can see you. Good okay. morning, Pia. Uh, Thank you. Would you like to make an opening statement? Yes, I would. Thank you. Yes, please proceed. Yes. Yes. Um, so, good morning, Mr. Chair, and good morning to uh, all our um, our resource persons and everyone attending. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with the format uh, of the chair, um, but I'd like I'd just like to um, put on record that uh, a number of those issues uh, have just been resolved in uh, the syntax bill. No, I mean I think those who are familiar with it would know. But obviously, this is uh, a very important hearing that the public um, the public that that will uh, is a very important hearing that will be part of our legislative history. So I do want to emphasize that. Uh, the syntax law, which which was passed barely a year ago, um, resolved already the issue on the uh, flavors, on the issue of age, and on the issue of uh, the jurisdiction of uh, of um, the FDA and DOH. Um, I also filed the bill, and I thank the chair for including it. It was uh, not in the original agenda, so perhaps some of the resource persons have not had it chance to look at it, but it's a comprehensive bill as well on the regulations of uh, e-cigarettes and vapes. Um, I'm sure we can uh, just discuss it as we go along. Uh, and then on that note, I would just like to reiterate what I put on record on the floor um, last week, that this is a very important health measure. I submit to the decision of the uh, Senate uh, majority or the, well, actually the majority rules, because I did not put it to a vote, that uh, the hearings will um, be conducted by this committee, but I, I do not change my position that this is a health measure and that this should have been led by the health committee. On that note, I trust the chair. I have had a, a good working relationship with his honor, and I, I truly hope that we can continue to work together because I don't believe that uh, there is any senator who would in good conscience promote the use of a product to the youth, no, in particular. So we, we can discuss that, we can discuss it in de detail later. And I know that his honor, like many um, uh, former smokers, have uh, been able to um, uh, use and benefit from, uh, 
from uh, that E Sigs, no? And I think his honor would, wouldn't mind that I mention it because he talks about he talked about it himself. But uh, we also talked about that this is a product that should not be in the hands of youth, and we should be very vigilant about the regulations because uh, the uptake of the youth in our country is very strong. Later on, maybe not in the hearing, maybe even on the floor, but as needed, I hope his honor would allow me because I actually went to WHO for a three-day um, uh, discussion or actually uh, lectures by health experts. And then I also went to uh, London where we, we met with various um, experts and uh, uh, academicians on uh, how how the e-cig industry was working in um, in the United Kingdom. And it's very different from the Philippines because uh, they do not have a issue anymore on uh, cigarette uptake in the youth. And that's why their ability to use e-cigs for adults who are using it as a cessation tool is very different from ours, it's very different from us because the landscape, the environment is very different. I'll go into it in more detail later on, but I just wanted to explain and put on record uh, that uh, that is the background I have in preparation for syntax, which is not very different from what we are doing now because we took into consideration the health aspect um, when we were when we were passing the legislation on taxation because taxation uh, was used also as a means to regulate the use of cigarettes at that time, at, at, of um, alternatives to cigarettes at that time. So I'll leave it at that, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the time, and I look forward to this discussion. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator Pia. And yeah, yes, we agree with you that our intention here is not to provide these products to uh, underage uh, or to to minors. No. Now, uh, Jingle, uh, the rules of the game will be that those who may want to speak will raise their hand using the function in WebEx. Okay. Now, I may not see everyone, so Jingle, you could assist me uh, if there are other people who are raising their hand. Yes, sir. Okay, because I can only see one page of the screen. No? Okay. So, thank you for that. Uh, again, Sartor Pia. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, just to make sure, uh, there seems to be six major points of discussion. The first uh, will be with, with regard to age, online trade, flavors, health warning, product notification, uh, regulatory agency jurisdiction, okay, uh, based on the four bills that we have. No? So let me begin uh, page by page. We've provided everyone with a matrix, including the bill of Senator Pia, uh, I hope everyone has a copy. Uh, we can start with page one. Uh, 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 section two, declaration of policy. Sir? If yes, you want to, uh, I can I can share the matrix, sir, for everyone, if you only. Okay, okay, please, please proceed, yes. Although if we share it, I think everyone has a copy of the matrix, eh? The problem is we won't see them raising their hands, no? okay? So, okay, so not much difference, no? Uh, as far as the declaration of policy, there are minor differences. Uh, with, with everyone's permission, let me move to section three. Section three is definition of terms. No? Maybe we can get back to this later on. Uh, because it all depends on the final version of the bill, whether or not we will need some of those terms being defined here. Okay. Uh, so maybe we can go to section four. And section four will be found on page nine of the matrix. And this is one of the areas of concern of no? packaging and health warning. Okay. Uh, are there any comments? This is a major area of concern. Um, sorry, Mr. Chair, Arnie Carino here from PMFTC. I, I couldn't find the raise hand button, so apologies. 
Okay. Spoke out. Uh, I'd like to uh, make um, some comment on this um, specific um, provision. Uh, well, for us, it is our view that you know um, health warnings for um, heated tobacco products and um, electronic um, nicotine delivery systems should be differentiated. We support putting health warnings, just to be very clear, we support putting health warnings on these products. Um, but for us, our view is that there should be differentiated health warnings um, as these products are fundamentally different from cigarettes because of the absence of combustion. So, so we hope that the committee can take into account that cigarette style health warnings should not be made to apply these products. But again, to be very clear, we support putting health warnings. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you for that. Could we hear from a health advocate? Uh, Jingle, uh, is there anyone? Maybe I see Dr. Dance is with us. Would, would you like to make a comment? Sir, they sing. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. Good morning, Your Honor. I'll, I'll defer to others at this point. This point. Okay. Uh, would there be... Um, okay. Any other health advocate that would want uh, to state his or her or their position uh, at this point in time? Dr. Yes, please. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you for this opportunity. I actually also wanted to comment on the earlier section, but I think we can go back to that. But on this particular section, um, our position is that uh, the current law already mandates the requirement of graphic health warning on these products because they are sin products, they are harmful products. And it is already proven by evidence that text warnings are not as effective as pictorial health warnings. And that's why uh, they are actually promoted, uh, pr uh, promoted in many countries as well as by the WHO as international best practice. And there is evidence to support this, Your Honor. So we would really recommend that we maintain the current uh, mandate to require graphic health warnings um, under the syntax law. Thank you, Your Honor. In, in other jurisdictions, like in the United States, did they use graphic health warnings on uh, on uh, vape or heated tobacco products? Or do they but, use text warning? In, in the U.S., they do not even require graphic warnings on cigarettes because uh, tobacco companies have challenged this in court under commercial free speech, no? but we don't have that here. And many other countries actually don't. Um, Korea has graphic health warnings on electronic cigarettes and heated tobacco products, Your Honor. Okay. Could, could someone provide us a list of countries who have graphic health warnings and or text warnings? Could some of the resource persons provide the committee with this information? Yeah, yes, Your uh, Honor. Um, Arne Carino here again. We can uh, share that to the committee. Um, as you know, we operate in uh, most of the countries around the world. So we will be able to share with you the regulatory environment. Of course. Or for the countries that okay. where we... Are, are there any other health uh, advocates who want to speak at this point in time on the graphic uh, warning or health warning? Whether it should be graphic or text and what size? Well, the bills no, are talking about 30% or 50%. If I'm not mistaken, tobacco products is 50%. Okay? So, I, you know, I'm amenable to 50%. The question so, only uh, is whether it should be graphic or text. Uh, I think there's uh, one person who wanted to speak. Jane? Yes. I'm, I'm one of the other Yes. Yes. I'm uh, Dr. Maricar Limpin, Maria Encarnita Limpin from the Philippine yes, College of Physicians. Yes, yes, please. I, uh, uh, the PCP uh, will uh, strongly support uh, graphic health warnings on uh, electronic uh, nicotine delivery systems, also on electronic non-nicotine delivery systems, as well as the heated tobacco products and other similar products. 
and uh, we would like to present that uh, right now what we have is 50%. So a 50% uh, graphic health warning will uh, be uh, what we will be supporting at the very minimum, but maybe we can even increase it to 75%. Uh, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jingle, there was another uh, person who wanted to speak. Yes, sir, from the Ad Standard Council. Nauna po siya, si Attorney Hilarbal. Okay, Attorney, please uh, continue. Uh, we can't hear you. Yeah, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, I just wanted to point it out if there are actually two products here, the device and the mixture itself. So just for purposes of packaging later on, uh, the distinction should be made in the provisions of the proposed bills. Yes, That's all I think I there's a distinction when it comes to my particular bill, no? Between the device itself and the consumables. And uh, isn't it that the graphic or weather tech or the health warning should be on the consumables and yeah, not on the device? Actually, uh, 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 use, because uh, the reference uh, history is tobacco products, it's on the product itself. Uh, as to the device, it's more on the safety use warning. Yes, yes. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, your Honor, may I be allowed again? Who is this? This is uh, Dr. Tintin. Yeah, yeah, doctor, could we have first another person to speak? Uh, there were there were a few others who wanted to speak earlier. Uh, Jinka, can you help me out with the? Yes, sir. Yes. Under Secretary Castello, and then from the FDA. Okay, please continue. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, the DTI supports the uh, inclusion of graphic health warnings, Mr. Chair, on the packaging, not only of the the refillable, but also on the product, the device itself. And we would also support the inclusion of other uh, details that the consumers would need to know, such as the components of each device or the ingredients of the e-liquid and then instructional materials as well would prove very important, Mr. Chair. And we would also like to um, suggest that the context and format of labels on and on package text, Mr. Chair, uh, will be in accordance with the provisions of the Consumer Act on labeling. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Ruth. Uh, Joey Dule was raising his hand earlier. Uh, Joey, would you like to say something? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, uh, we don't... Um... Uh, we we uh, support the graphic health warning as long as it is um, appropriate and uh, truthful to the product. Because uh, some uh, graphic health warnings on cigarette packs shows uh, lung cancer or it causes gangrene. It might not be appropriate uh, to uh, e-cigarette products or vapor products, Senator. Okay, thank you for that, Joey. Uh, any other before we move on to the next se section? Okay, there, there being none, uh, but you're all Mr. free Chair. to submit your position papers, huh? On, Chair, on this department. particular section. Yeah, someone wanted to speak, uh, the gentleman in the jacket. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, from the Department of Health. Uh, we would okay, just like to first. Yes, please continue. Uh, suggest that the graphic health warning should uh, be included in the unit product in any outside packaging of ENDS and HTPs. Uh, including the electronic juices uh, and refill containers no? and it should be uh, it should include that uh, the jhw should include uh, that will be included will be compliant with the provisions of ra uh, 10640 which is the graphic health warnings law and that it should be made that it cannot be removed altered or modified by heating and other uh, means the graphic health warning shall not also be obscured by any product design or any device uh, modification and lastly the ends and HTPs uh, unit products and any communication materials should not bear any health claims or that it can be used as smoking cessation device or as an alternative to uh, smoking Mr. Chair. Okay thank you. Um, the other person who wanted to speak earlier, uh, Jingle, uh, could Dr. you help me? Dr. Limpinpo. 
No, there, there, there's another person first before we go back to her. Uh, yes. Uh, I think the guy, the uh, uh, beige jacket with glasses. Yes. Uh, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Uh, you're on mute. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you hear? Can you hear, Senator? Uh, Lorenzo Mata, yes. You yes, know, I can't yes. hear. I can't. Your names don't come out, so it's hard for me to call it. Yeah. Do, do yeah, we have you know. a function that the names come out so I can call them? It's there already, I think. Yeah, yeah it's, it's there right now, but you know, none of the others, right? Okay. Okay. Mr. Mata, please uh, proceed. Okay. Uh, we in quit for good. Uh, agree that we should put health warnings also on our, our product because they are not risk-free and they contain nicotine, which is an addictive substance. And therefore, our products should also carry health warnings. But applying the same health warnings to tobacco and nicotine products might confuse consumers and lead to continued cigarette smoking. So health warnings for HTPs and vaping products should also address the specific risks of those products in a way that leaves smokers with a clear understanding of how those uh, risks compare to the risk of cigarette smoking, just to give them a distinction of it. Okay. So there are those who are distinguishing no, between uh, vape heated tobacco and that of uh, tobacco products. No? And that, that there are those saying that the warning should be different. Yes. While there are those saying it should comply with the tobacco uh, health warning law. Okay. Uh, Chair. Yes, uh, Senator Pia. Yeah, two things, just to aid you in uh, identifying your speakers. If you put your, if you drag your cursor to the the picture of their face, the name will pop out. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. Not, Thank you. I, I just figured it out now myself when you were saying okay. accent your names. As you move okay. it along, the names will come That's up. That's right. That's right. I can see it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, the, the point the point only that I'd like to make to add to the discussion is that um, uh, I'm happy to hear that everyone is amenable to health warnings. Uh, I certainly hope that uh, it's graphic health warnings because uh, we already debated this long and hard and we shouldn't deviate from that. Um, but as to whether we distinguish or not, I think that can be a fairly simple decision, Mr. Chair. Um, let, let's look at what the international experts have to say. If they, if they are already differentiating, if WHO will differentiate between uh, the harmful effects of uh, regular cigarettes and these alternatives, then we can, we can um, I think we can follow that. But if there has been no categorical differentiation, then we should not be we should not differentiate yet. No, I, I know that that debate is still ongoing. So if that debate is still ongoing, we should err on the side of prudence and not um, say that this is better or this is better or safer. If that is not yet clear, if it is clear, I have no problem. But if it is not yet clear, then we cannot make those distinctions, Mr. Chair. So that's what I just want to put on the record. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Pia. I think it's a fair statement. No? <laughs> Uh, but but uh, in the bills at present, huh? uh, at present, the, in the four bills at present, there are three talking about uh, text warning and one graphic warning. Okay. Um, uh, any other resource persons who may want to say their piece on this issue? Your Honor, uh, I'm Professor Ron Christian Season. I'm representing the Harm Reduction Alliance of the Philippines. We're a group of academicians and scientists who are doing and advocating public health policies on harm reduction. So our, we have already submitted our position paper on both FDA and DOH. And just on the registration, we have submitted our, also our position paper on this uh, to your office, Your Honor. And we believe that Global health warnings are important, and but that is vital and should be differentiated from the GHW since in our ordinary cigarettes. And this is because these products does not have combustion, and which may attribute to many of the non-communicable diseases related to combustible. So that is our personal our stand as the Harm Reduction Alliance of the Philippines. Okay, thank you, Professor Cesar. Uh, okay, so we move on to the next issue. Uh, we move on to Section 5. 
Mr. Chair, sorry, just before um, just before yeah. you leave, um, just to clarify, you know, I think it was Dr. Yule who mentioned it that, uh, and I did not mention it in my opening statement, so that's why I'm adding it now that the uh, the reference to the graphic health warning law was already made in our syntax law. So I, I just emphasize this because these were legislative decisions that were already made. And these were made barely a year ago. So I just like to put that on record because if we will change anything, if we will change a law that was just passed a year ago. There has to be a substantial reason for that because this is already the legislative mandate. So, so I just point it out because uh, I don't want us to forget what we actually already passed upon uh, in the recently in the recently legislated syntax law. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Senator Bia. Uh, so we move on section five. Uh, tamper resistant and child res resistant design. I suppose uh, not, not much discussion here, no? Uh, okay, so we move on to section six, minimum age sales and purchase. Yes. Uh, apologies, Mr. Chair. Uh, may I speak? Oh, this is um, Tony Flores from CRN. Okay, yeah, uh, please proceed. Yeah, you wanted to make a comment on section four or section five on the health warnings for in line with the um discussion okay the, please proceed thank you very much Paul. i just i would just like to manifest um at this point no i have submitted also our position paper to the to the community and uh one of our um suggest uh our recommendation is that this product should not be considered harm reduction strategies as proposed in SBN 951, so we uh, recommend that this might be put as consideration, no, in in deciding whether or not to differentiate the health warnings. There are no conclusive studies to prove their effectiveness in reducing harm in this case from cigarette use, and in fact, studies have shown that it is more likely that users of these products would either use both e-cigarettes and traditional cigarettes, or switch from e-cigarettes to traditional cigarette use like what happened to the first case of um, Ivali with a 16-year-old girl. So, um, yes, I would just like to manifest that to be put in consideration for that provision. Thank you very much, Paul. Yes, so thank you for that. Uh, so now we, are, we're, uh, we proceed to Section 6, Minimum Age Sales and Purchase. No? Uh, uh, in the three bills for consideration, it talks about 18 years old. Now, in the, the Senate bill and the current syntax law, it is at 21. Uh, may I solicit your comments and suggestions? Uh, maybe one, 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 one question. To buy alcohol, what age is the requirement? 18? Isn't it 18? 18. 18, right? To buy alcohol. Yeah, para what, about, po, what about tobacco? 18. 18. 18 years old for alcohol. Yeah. 18 for alcohol, 18 for tobacco. Okay. And uh, in the current law, the syntax law, uh, when we debated this last year, the age was at 21, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Should we differentiate? The age <laughs> of alcohol, tobacco, and e-cigarettes, or should they all be the same at eighteen? Uh, Your Honor. The yes. So. Your Honor. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Our current law, RA eleven four six seven, already mandates that the minimum age of purchase for uh, electronic cigarettes and for heated tobacco products is at twenty one years old of age now scientific studies have shown that the age of maturation actually occurs at the age of 25 years now if we are thinking of changing the minimum age of purchase maybe what we should do is even increase it to 25 years now to be consistent since all of these are all addictive substances maybe it is wise to consider that we put the minimum age of purchase for all uh, 
the vapor, the vaporized products, heated tobacco products, all the regular tobacco products, and even alcohol at the age of 21, or even perhaps at age 25, so that we will be able to prevent no, our young from taking up this addiction at an earlier age, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, so your position is to increase the age to 25, but hopefully for tobacco, alcohol, and e-cigarettes also 20 all okay. in all sir in correct all. correct oh. that's what i said right okay well any other comments from the group from our resource persons sir, dr yeah. gonzalez has been raising her hand yeah. okay please dr. Gonzalez. good morning good yeah. morning everyone i'm dr Riz gonzalez from the philippine pediatric society the concept of maturation of the brain has been there for the past 10 years so that's why the tobacco control act the marriage uh, uh, eligibility at 18 and even access to alcohol has long been set to 18 years old. Now we have seen that so many of our adolescents are put into jeopardy, not only in the access of tobacco, but also in vehicular accidents, teenage pregnancy, because that age still is at the risk-taking behavior. It is the maximum age wherein they experiment and th try out things. Now, vape has been in the market for 18 years, and we should uh, learn our lessons from the history of what happened in the United States, that many of those who have been affected are actually in this age group. That's why they have this tobacco control, the Tobacco Act of 21, regulating and have really been passed in several majority of their states. The access of vape should be at 21 years old. We in the PPS believes in this contention that the prefrontal cortex, which is actually where the dopamine reward center is and the target of nicotine, matures last by the age of 25. Exposure to nicotine regularly negatively affects the development of this particular part of the brain, which is important for the executive function. That is mainly mood and impulse control, attention and learning which impacts decision making this biologic principle coupled with the social and psychological principles work to renormalize smoking as indicated by numerous scientific studies lowering the age of access to e-cigarettes from 21 to 18 years old we find is a retrospective act we have a very good law that's ra 11467 and we lord senator pia then because if we don't start, uh, start in one product, which is really creating a lot of problems, especially in the United States, we will never solve this problem of this accidents, uh, this healthy ha uh, these unhealthy habits of our adolescents. So we oppose re this retrogressive act of bringing the 18 years old. And we should review also our laws on tobacco, where in our children, what is the age of initiation of tobacco? It is less than 18. When we did our nationwide survey last year, February, March 2020, among all regions in public schools, grade 7 to 9, we have seen that about 20% of our youth are using electronic cigarettes. That is so unfortunate. And we all know that smoking and vaping initiation before the age of 18 makes the brain harder to quit because of the rewiring and the, the constant wiring of this nicotine is doing in the prefrontal cortex. So we uphold that the age of access should be at 21 years old. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, Joey, yes, uh, proceed. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Recto. Uh, just for the uh, matter of consistency in our laws, um, we could uh, apply for a driver's license. Uh, we could vote at 18. Uh, we can buy cigarettes at 18, buy alcohol at 18. Uh, when when the 21 and uh, restriction was passed, we were hoping that uh, this law would be revisited, and I think this is a perfect time for us to to maybe correct or uh, uh, put it back uh, to what is consistent with our uh, uh, laws uh, on, on these kind of products. That's all, Your Honor. Mr. Mr. Chair. Thank you, jo uh, Joey. Yes, uh, Senator Pia. Uh, 
Just a very quick reply, not to Mr. Dulay. With all due respect, sir, driving, um, applying for uh, being able to vote, those are not harmful <laughs> actions. So uh, they may they may have um, like driving may have some risks, but they are not in itself harmful actions. Uh, to be able to to use an e-cig e -cig is a harmful, it's a privilege that should only be allowed the adults, or not just adults, but um, young people who have mature brains already because it is addictive. So that's the distinction that we're making. So I, I just have to comment on that because I don't think it should be aligned with those other activities uh, the resource person is mentioning. Perhaps if, his, if uh, the resource person referred to other activities, like uh, his honor referred to alcohol and cigarettes, then, then obviously that is a discussion that we need to have. Uh, in fact, I am prepared to file a bill increasing the age of, of uh, access to those uh, other suitable products to uh, older age as well, whether it's 21, 23, or 25, I'm still deciding on that. That is what we should do and not the lowering. That's my position, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pia. Uh, okay, you have uh, Peter. Peter, you wanted to speak? Um, yes, uh, your honor. Um, well, at Vapor's PH, oh, is it we, is we, that, um, we could be gender sensitive here, huh? So let's have a male, let's have a female, let's have a male, let's have a female after. Peter, <laughs> please, please. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to manifest that um, uh, we support what uh, Mr. Joey is saying, uh, Sir Joey Dulay, um, for consistencies of our laws. And also, other countries like the United Kingdom, um, they've still maintained the uh, 18 years of age with respect to the sale and the uh, consumption of uh, uh, vaping products or ends. Finally, um, I agree that um, we should help and protect uh, the youth sector with respect to the consumption of this product. But I'd like to manifest that we have to look at what we're trying to do here as a whole. Because if we put the restrictions already in place, putting it all together, and um, the the registration, the jurisdiction, all of that, um, the 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 18 years of, I think we already have enough uh, processes in place to protect the youth, not just straight up 18, 25, 21. Thank you, Peter. And Gina, you wanted to speak. Yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry, just to interject. No, later on, can we ask uh, the last resource persons to give us a list of what are those uh, um, what are those interventions that he mentioned that we have in place to protect the youth? Because I don't believe that we do. But if that is his position, I respect it. Let's ask him to submit, please. Uh, so direct that Peter, you make some sense to the committee. Okay. Uh, please proceed. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. May I be allowed to talk? I'm Dr. Gina Canonizado. Yes, I'm please proceed. So, yeah. I'm from the Philippine Academy of Pediatric Pulmonologists, and we also believe that the age limit should be uh, maintained at 21 if we cannot go to 25 because of the reasons already given by Dr. Gonzalez. Now, if ever we have some laws uh, limiting the age to 18, but perhaps by at this time, it is but, uh, it is but proper for us to do what's, what's more right and what's better for our youth. Since you know at 18, these are just adolescents and the deciding factor that they have will be mainly on a brain that's not yet that fully mature. So I guess because if you allow these things to happen at an early age, this will be a gateway to other addiction and more problems, not only with their health, but also socially, psychologically, and mentally. So I think I, I really 100% go to the age limit of 21 if we cannot go up to 25, which would be better. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, Gina. Uh, Lorenzo Mata, uh, you were raising your hand. Sir, if I may lang po, sir, si Senator Gold gusto na po magsalita. Hindi na siya makarace na. Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, before we recognize uh, Mr. Mata and the others uh, and uh, the NCUP representative, uh, the chair would like to call Senator Go for a statement.
Mr. Chair? Yes, please uh, proceed, the Chairman of the Committee of Health. Uh, Mr. Chair, we support the position of our health uh, experts on this uh, issue. And in this uh, regard, may I deliver a short uh, manifestation as Chair of the Committee on uh, Health. First of all, as Chairman of the Committee on Health, let me emphasize uh, that as much as this is an issue involving commercial regulation, this is also a health uh, issue. That is why I thank our chairman of this uh, subcommittee, no less than Senate President uh, Pro Tempore, Ralph Parecto, for inviting health uh, advocates and tobacco control groups to this uh, hearing. Importante po marinig natin ang kanilang panig at uh, mabalanse ang regulasyon at protection ng ating uh, kalusugan. We need enforcement of uh, regulations against products that may contain or uh, emit uh, potentially toxic uh, substan substances or highly uh, addictive sub substances which are harmful to our uh, health. As uh, policymakers, we must strike a balance between regulating uh, products that may be alternative to or less risky than uh, traditional uh, tobacco products and protecting uh, public health, especially with the objective of preventing addiction among our youth. As chair of the health committee, unahin ko po ang kapakanan ng bawat Pilipino, ang kalusugan nila, kung ang usapin ay sa pagitan ng uh, negosyante o kalusugan ng Pilipino, pipiliin ko po ang kalusugan ng Pilipino. Even President Rodrigo Duterte has taken a public health stance on this issue. Last year, the president issued executive order number 106 which uh, prohibits the manufacture, distribution, marketing, and sale of unregistered or uh, adulterated electronic cigarettes, heated uh, tobacco products, or HTP, and other uh, novel uh, tobacco products. Under EO-106, uh, access to electronic cigarettes and HTP has been uh, restricted to persons over 21 years of age. The use of e-cigarettes and HTP has also been included in the nationwide smoking ban. Kahit noong wala pang e-cigarette, uh, inuuna po talaga ni then uh, Davao City Mayor Rudy Duterte ang kalusugan ng kanyang constituents. Kaya noon pa mayroon ng mahigpit na anti-smoking uh, ordinance sa Davao City. Congress has also taken a position on the matter when we passed the syntax law for uh, e-cigarettes which was sponsored by our fellow health advocate, uh, Senator uh, Ia Caetano. Maganda na mayroong mas mahigit, ma uh, mas maganda po na mayroong mas uh, mahigpit na regulasyon ang ating otoridad na may kaugnayan sa lahat ng uri ng e-cigarettes. Suportado ko po ito ang mga polisiya na naglalayong mas maprotektahan ang kalusugan ng ating mamamayan sa pamamagitan na, na mas mahigpit na regulasyon. We should not allow the unregulated use of these products and how it is easily accessed by minors. I also echo the advice of health officials and experts for the public to refrain from using uh, vapes and e-cigarettes as the knowledge on the products is still limited. Ang paggamit ng e-cigarette ay masama pa rin sa kalusugan, lalo na kapag uh, minor na edad ang gumagamit. Nakakabahala rin po sa... Nakakabahala! rin po na laganap ito sa kabataan. According to the 2018 uh, National Enhanced Nutrition Survey, 19% of regular e-cigarette users are youth aged uh, 10 to 19 years old. This is uh, way above the regular cigarette users among the youth, which, which is uh, at 6%. Nararapat lang po na pag-aralan po natin ito ng mabuti. Kaya po, uh, on the Committee on Health and its members, will be involved in actively participate in the discussions on the matter. I'm also sure that our good chair, Senator Recto, will uh, consider all factors for us to be able to come up with the meaningful uh, legislation. Maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you, Senator Go. Uh, thank you for your inputs. Uh, uh, this juncture, I'd like to recognize uh, Mr. Mata thereafter, Mr. Israel, then uh, Don Ghetto and Mr. Flores. Of course, if there are women who may want to speak, uh, we'll have it male, female, male, female. Huh? Okay, please proceed. 
Mr. Mata, please proceed. We can't hear you, uh, Mr. Mata. You're on mute. You're still on mute. I've unmuted. I've muted myself already. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Am I clear? Yeah. Please proceed. Yeah. Okay. I, I, again, as a smoking cessation advocate, I think by being stringent uh, with the less uh, viable, less harmful alternative product, will send the wrong <laughs> signal. Will will send the wrong signal again to smokers that HTPs <laughs> and EVPs are more harmful than combustible tobaccos. Our, our concern is really the smoking-related diseases causing, you know, 8 million deaths per year worldwide. If we are only able to switch our 1.3 billion smokers, this less harmful alternative, to this less harmful alternative, we can considerably lessen deaths every year. We just have to strike a balance between the, its impact on cessation and it's and it's on in impact on initiation, which is exactly what your uh, what your committee is doing now, do, giving the regulation necessary to prevent uh, the youth uptake of these uh, uh, dead uh, these uh, uh, products. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mata. Uh, Mr. Israel. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair you, you mentioned you mentioned that uh, if there's a woman, uh, it will be alternate. So since there's yeah. no resource woman, I'll be the woman who speaks. May uh, I please, proceed? Yes, yes, please proceed. Yeah. Thank you. Very quick reaction, lang, Mr. Chair. Um, his own he, the the resource person is trying to make a distinction between a harmful product and a less harmful product. So. If the position of uh, of uh, this resource person or the other uh, groups that are representing uh, e-cigs and vapes, uh, is that it, it is less harmful or it should be used as a cessation product, then let's remember that there is a different course to take if it is going to be registered as a cessation product. Then they should register a cessation product and then they can say everything they want to say. So that, that is a very clear distinction that has, must be made every time, if I may just request this honor, every time somebody claims that it is less harmful, it is a cessation product, then let's be directed to that right course of action because you can make those claims if you are properly identified by the FDA as a, re as a cessation product. Wala namang problema doon. But you cannot just make those claims based on the claims of your company. So let's be clear about that, Mr. Pres Mr. Chair. And I have, I have one more thing to add, but I'll do it later because uh, I don't want to really interfere with your flow, no? but I just wanted to react to that. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Bia. Um, Mr. Israel? Yes, Mr. Chair, nais ko lamang po bigyan ng reaksyon. Dahil tayo ay nasa dilema ng choosing between which one is of lesser evil. E hindi rin man natin naman ipapatunayan pa na ang vaping is equally evil or equally destructive as it's smoking. Wala pa po tayong enough data on that. Now, tungkol po dun sa age restriction, isa po sa mga uh, gusto nilang taasan yung edad ng 21 or to 25. That means eh, yung mga vaping supplies and vaping gadgets ay eh, affordable na rin po kung nagtatrabaho na sila. Whereas kung 18 years old, eh, restricted pa rin ho and very inaccessible pa rin ho ang vaping materials dahil napakamahal po para mag-start ng vaping. So ang magiging entry point talaga nila is smoking. At least kung ang, ang, ang accessibility ay nasa mababa, makakapamili pa sila na na pwede sila mag -vape kung kailangan nila ng nicotine. Of course, pagdating po sa approach ng aming grupo ng Nicotine Consumers Union, hindi po namin tinitignan ang pag vape as a smoking cessation but as a tool for nicotine consumption continuation. Yun lamang po. Thank you. Uh, we had uh, recognized also the other person. Um, okay, Mr. Flores. We will have Mr. Flores, then Mr. Cabrera. Sorry, Mr. Don Mr. Castello after and Mr. Dance. Yes, please proceed. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, sir, uh, as you say, ma uh, alternating men, women, I'm, so it may also be recognized. Yes, please proceed. Yeah. This is Miss uh, Miss Flores, right? Oh, po. <laughs> I'm a woman, po, Mr. Chair. Thank okay. you. All right. Yes. All right. 
uh, I would just like to say that um, on behalf of the Child Rights Network, we urge the committee to put children at the forefront in the deliberations of this law. And so we would like to, our goal for be to prevent children's exposure to toxic substances as much as we can. And so we recommend further raising the restriction for buying and using these products to 25 years old as part of the brain responsible for executive function, as already mentioned by Dr. Gonzalez, um, uh, continues to develop until the age of 25. And exposing children and youth's brain to toxic substances before this age might impair their cognition and impede brain's full development. The, the nicotine content of the cigarettes is highly addictive. Um, thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you very much. Then we have uh, Ms. Uh, Cabrera. Um, good. Good morning, Mr. Chair. I'm Dr. Aguilina Ong Cabrera. Yes, please proceed. From uh, Philippine College of Chess Physicians. So rather than just uh, giving a statement, I would like to leave a question. Because uh, picking up from this, the discussion on smoking cessation, we are talking about uh, the youth, 18 years old. So why would we even consider smoking cessation for these people who are supposedly not yet smokers? So in that aspect, why were we are we considering smoking cessation when we should stop them from actually using nicotine? And uh, the, why are, are we even promoting nicotine for these uh, kids or 18 and above, or at least 21 and below? So that is my uh, statement, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your statement, uh, Mr. Dance. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Dr. Das, uh, proceed. Yes, uh, I, I would just like to point out that the issues on labeling and age limits uh, has been confused by this concept of harm reduction. Because if there is harm reduction, then a lower age is acceptable and kinder warnings. But if there is no harm reduction, then we need to be stricter. So I'd like to distinguish what we're discussing here because uh, I was asked to review the literature uh, on this. And since my last presentation in 2019, October, at the Committee on Health, since then, there have been 882 new studies on e-cigarettes and, and heated tobacco products. Uh, and these studies show that potential harm reduction is only a possibility for prescribed use for non smokers. Uh, iba po yung prescribed use sa general market availability in malls for markets. Here, when you're talking about general availability, there is absolutely no proof of harm reduction. So, para hung alimbawa, just to give an extreme example, talk about morphine. Morphine has benefit, right? Uh, but it's for prescribed use we don't make it widely available in markets uh, exactly because uh, it induces uh, addic addiction. So uh, the harms of casual availability of ends in malls and markets actually has no harm reduction. In fact, there are three proven harms uh, that I've seen in the literature which I can show you if the numbers, if necessary. Casual use or casual availability increases the risk of alcohol binges around fourfold. It increases the use of tobacco sixfold or 500% more and increases the use of marijuana fourfold. So there are several studies on tens of thousands of patients showing these three effects on casual availability of uh, this product. So I think we need to make a distinction because we are not talking about prescribed use here. We are talking about open market availability. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, Dr. Lance. I, I'd like to recognize also our majority leader, one of the authors of the measures we're considering, uh, Senator Mixabiri, welcome. Good morning. Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning to all the uh, uh, interest groups, to our colleagues in the Senate, uh, to all the health advocates. Good morning. I'm just here to support 
our chairperson and uh, listening. I'm just listening into all the discussions. Very, Thank you. Very informative. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Majority Leader. I'd like to recognize now DTI uh, USEC Ruth Castello. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning again, everyone. Mr. Chair, um, the, the well, we the DTI would probably leave it to medical, scientific, uh, practical uh, positions on the age requirement, but we would like to invite attention, Mr. Chair, to the existing laws. Uh, we have Republic Act 6809 lowering the age of majority from 21 to 18. We also have Republic Act 9211, Mr. Chair, uh, limiting the age of uh, legal smoking to 18. So perhaps we can take a look at these laws so that we can align the provisions of this bill, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to recognize also uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, yeah. I just want to point out to, to um, Yusek, Ruth, you're Yusek Baasek. Um, Yusek, Madam. Yusek, Yusek Ruth, yes. Senator. I just want to point out that uh, the syntax is also a law that require that that pegged it at 21. No? I'm just surprised that you didn't mention that. That is the law that protects the youth, and it's pegged at 21. So you should also include that in your enumeration. Otherwise, it's it's almost like you're batting for a lower age group. Just just for clarity, no. I I'd, I'd like to believe that you're not, but so I'm just pointing that out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dongeto Romeo. Good morning, sir. Yes, good morning. Yes. Yes, uh, the Philippine Legislators uh, Committee on Population and Development's position is that these products, the ENDS and BMPs, are harmful and addictive. And so our position is uh, for the ban on selling of these products to young people and raise the age of restriction for buying and using these products to 25 years old, and we are very supportive of the position of Senator Pia Cayetano and Senator, Sen uh, Senator Bongo. That's thank all. you. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. I think we've had a lot of discussion on this issue already, you know, as far as age is concerned. No? So let me move on to Section 7, Proof of Age Verification. So I suppose there is no opposition here, right? Whether it's 18 or 21. Okay, so let me move on to online trade, section eight. Okay, should we allow online trade or should we ban it? Uh, could you could we hear from our resource persons? Anyone? Could, can you buy now uh, tobacco products online, alcohol online? Heated tobacco products online and the vape online. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And is there a way of regulating it online? Because my bill seeks to regulate it online. I know it's difficult, but uh, is there a way to do it? This is one of the main points of discussion. As I enumerated, yes. Uh, and yeah, Senator Ivy Marcos. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I think the usual the usual system is self-declaration, you know, uh, which is obviously defective, and uh, other age uh, verification efforts. But in reality, the uh, best would be uh, the uh, in-person identification upon delivery. Upon delivery and the provision of an adequate government ID with a photo, with a date of birth, and so on. So, yun talaga yung online verification, kasi yung self declaration, as we well know, um, yeah. has its deficiencies. But as you rightly pointed, po, everything's available online. It's a very good point, no? Upon delivery, okay, that you have to prove your age upon delivery. So it's not so much online. We could have a regulation online, but then the final will be once it's delivered to your home, may proof of uh, verification, no? If that would be possible, no? Okay. Uh, any other Your Honor, suggestions? Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think most of our uh, 
our uh, online transactions, our cash on delivery in any case, uh, upon payment, they can provide the ID that will indicate age. That's right. That's right. A good point. Thank you. Uh, any other comments on this issue? Mr. Chair. Yes. Who, who is this? Could you state your name? Uh, Dr. Doroteo. Uh, please proceed. Yes. Um, while we um, believe that in-person verification is uh, possible, uh, we know from our own online purchasing experiences, even not for vaping, but for other products, the delivery person often doesn't check uh, ID, doesn't even check if uh, the person who is supposed to receive the item is there. You know? um, I, I get messages, for example, saying that I need to present uh, a particular code or identify myself when I make an online purchase. But the person receiving it uh, from my household doesn't present any information at all, uh, just says, yes, this, that person lives here and is able to receive the package. You know? um, so even the, though the law might specify that, the enforcement is very, very weak. You know? um, I don't know how it can be done, uh, even with in-person. And this actually relates both to the young people. Um, they can order um, in the name of their parents, for example, bypassing whatever online verification is available and still be able to get these products to themselves. Yeah, yeah but e even if you ban online, it will still continue, isn't it? But if it is uh, banned, Your Honor, uh, then there is a legal remedy for uh, the authorities to clamp down because the authorities can also see what is online and not just have to go house to house to verify if the person buying is actually of legal age. Yeah, but I think that will also be difficult. But nevertheless, any other comments? I think DTI, USEC, Ruth Castello, and then Attorney Reggie, and the FDA Director, Anna. Uh, wanted to speak. Okay, so uh, uh, you said Ruth Castello. Oh yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, um, there are three. Um, and you said Castello, you're coming in. Your your signal is not too good. So perhaps we can also get to um. Yeah, let, let me cut you first uh, because you're not coming in clear. Uh, maybe Attorney Reggie yeah. first. They post their... Attorney, yes, Attorney Thank Reggie. You, Your yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just two points. Please continue, Attorney Reggie. We'll get back to you, Attorney Ruth. Yes. Uh, you said, I believe that if we believe that if uh, there is a provision prohibiting online selling, then that in itself could be a limiting factor to vendors that sell online because of the penalty and uh, proper monitoring can uh, curb this. Second is if we decide that online selling is uh, going, may be done, then there's a related issue of point of sales notifications because there is a provision in the proposed bill that certain mandatory notifications are can should be posted on point of sales like uh, this product etc so this should also apply to any online vendor because it is a point of sale that's correct so thank you point. thank you attorney reggie and you have a uh, uh, director anna of the fda thank you sir for accommodating us um the problem is that uh, the access of the youth on, to online selling. And uh, we also had issues before that we monitored that some of these products contain illegal substances. And uh, those coming from uh, other countries would not be following the restrictions provided for under the law. So we support the proposal of uh, Senator Pia to have this uh, online selling banned or prohibited so that we would have some regulatory oversight 
in terms of having these products being made accessible to everybody. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Anna. Uh, any other comments here, or do we move on? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes I know Mr. Frank Milon is uh, recognized. Yes. May I know how we will implement banning this online? Is there technology? Any resource person, uh, DTI, USEC, you're raising your hand. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes, Mr. Chair, as I was saying earlier, uh, the department is going to issue technical regulations on this because uh, we need to make sure that our Philippine national standards are complied with. So perhaps, Mr. Chair, if we allow online selling of these devices and uh, the, the materials used for this, um, the sellers or importers should be able to post the license number on the page where the device is sold that so that consumers can verify, Mr. Chair, if these products are indeed certified and has passed the test uh, done by the DDI. My, Otherwise, well, Mr. Chair, perhaps... Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. My question is, is there technology that can ban uh, online selling? Regulation, yes. I mean, banning? Just just a question, uh, a, a technical question. For gambling, I know they can. If you're below 18 years old, gambling, there is a way of doing it. Now, with regard to these products, I'm not too sure. Huh? But the technology should be the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, Mario. Uh, Mario, you want to yes. proceed? Yes. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think I, I just want to to make uh, to share the experience being done by by Jewel. By the way, I'm I'm Mario Zinampan, and I'm I'm the consultant letter for U Corporation, which is the local distributor of Jewel products in the Philippines. So let me just share what what Jewel is actually doing in order to curb underage use uh, access of our products online. So what we're doing is we follow adhere to very strict two age very uh, two age verification process in order to prevent the underage from uh, buying our products. So to the bond straight, uh, the first step for is for that buyer to submit an ID, upload an ID online, and afterwards, uh, it is required that that person also takes a selfie and again upload. So we have a technology uh, similar to what financial institutions are doing to be, to be able to check that the buyer is in need of age. So I just want to share that uh, self-regulation that we are doing despite the absence of regulation at the moment with respect to online sex. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mario. Thank you for that, for the information. Okay. Any Mr. other Chair, comments? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair, Arnie Carino from uh, Philip Morris. Yes, Arnie, um, please. please, please. Um, okay. Uh, on this particular point, um, Mr. Chair, let me just state that um, we support the regulation of um, online selling, uh, but not prohibition. I guess what's important to take note here really is the balancing, of course, of um, the balancing of interest, which is on the first, on the one hand, we want to be able to give adult smokers who would otherwise continue smoking that platform to access their products, especially now when movement is um, limited. We we don't want them at the end of the day to go back to smoking for those of them who've already switched. So that's one one end that we need to look at. On the other hand, we also need to regulate online selling to ensure that these products um, do not get into the hands of minors. Um, so I think that's that's crucial. And from our end, um, we do exercise. We're very strict. We have strict protocols uh, when it comes to the hard age uh, verification of our products upon delivery um, to the one who ordered it. Um, uh, if, if I don't know if some of you may have uh, purchased our products online, 
um, the uh, the delivery guy uh, didn't deliver it to the to the right to that person if there's no government ID that is shown. Um, so I, I guess this is just again uh, where we're coming from. We want we support online regulation that balances the interest of adult smokers who would otherwise continue smoking. At the same time, ensuring um, these the, the minors uh, don't get hold of these products. Um, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any other final comment on this issue before we move on to the next issue? Mr. Chair. Uh, who is this? Attorney Hularwa. Uh, yes, Attorney, please uh, proceed. Uh, just an added input uh, related to the question of uh, Senator Drillon. Uh, just uh, we, there are two types of online selling actually pervasive in the Philippines. One is through registered vendors such as Shopee, Lazada, etc. And it's easy to, pro if we prohibit selling online, it's easy to regulate them because they cannot do their business if they continue to sell prohibited products. But there is the underground economy that is the use of uh, social media such as Facebook, etc. Uh, we, we must bear in mind also that these uh, social media pages have uh, algorithms and uh, procedures that you can ask the uh, Facebook, for example, to close down a page if it continues to perform illegal acts, such as selling illegal items. So there is a remedy, Your Honor. Thank, uh, thank you very much. Okay, any other? So we move on to the next. Uh, section 9, trails within school perimeters. There is a suggestion here, 100 meters or 200 meters. Okay. Uh, we move on. Uh, section 10, point of sale. Signage. So I guess we all agree on this. Uh, product communication restriction, section 11. Any comments on this? Uh, Mr. Mata, yes. Mr. Mata, you wanted to say something on section 11? So I guess that. Mr. Chief, uh, um... Yes. I'll, I'll give way to uh, Senator Pia, uh, Mr. Uh, Thank Senator, you. Yes, you wanted to say something? Oh, please proceed. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I just want to put uh, on record that I'll be filing a bill that restricts uh, the uh, point of purchase display of uh, all uh, harmful pro sin, sin, sin products. Um, it may or may not be taken up now, but I just felt like uh, it's better for me to already mention it now because it may uh, eventually affect this provision. Uh, this is done in countries, and I'd like to point out that during my visit to um, to uh, to London, um, and no less than that, we had we had uh, resource persons from the University College London, UK, which actually World Economic Forum just ranked as the number one university in the world um, recently. But uh, our our resource persons from from that university. Pointed out that their treatment of um, uh, alternative uh, smoking products and devices is very different than other countries because they do not have a strong uptake among the youth anymore. And despite that, um, uh, so even though they are allowing and you know um, they, they still have restrictions on the sale of their e-cigarettes and vapes. However, um, what what whatever they're doing there, in a way can be viewed as more lenient already. Uh, we, we, in other, what I'm trying to say is we cannot even be any more lenient than them because they already uh, are no longer, they have concluded that their, their youth is not at risk in the way that the world's youth is at risk because the youth do not find smoking cool anymore. We have not reached that point. That's what I'm trying to say. We have not reached that point where our youth think that ay pang matanda lang yung sigarilyo ay it's not cool to smoke our youth still think it's cool to smoke and therefore if we are liberal with our um 
uh, sales of uh, the alternatives, then we will be harming the youth into waste. They will continue to be purchasing cigarettes, and then they will also now be interested in in this alternative product. So I, I just want us to be very mindful of that. And I mention it now because one solution would be no point of purchase display of products. So um, that is one of the uh, um, recommendation I will be putting forward. Um, I do I do recognize that. Uh, other products uh, are not are not held to this standard, and that's why my bill does not have that. But that's also why I'm saying that I intend to file another bill that will also cover regular cigarettes on this, because this is what is being done in progressive countries that have been effective in in stopping uh, the growth of uh, the uptake of smoking among among the youth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you for that. Before before, and I'd just like to ask a question. No? Uh, those selling tobacco products or alcohol products, do they have a sign outside that says the sale or distribution of their products uh, could not be sold to those 18 years of age or below? Those selling tobacco products and alcohol products today? Your Honor. Yes. I believe this is covered under. I was trying to raise a hand for the comment on the previous. Yes, I'll give you. Yeah. Uh, before that, our on the previous uh, topic, uh, Your Honor. But I can comment on this one also. Uh, uh, okay, please proceed. Hello. Yes. Can I? Can yes. I comment on this yes. one? Yes, please proceed. Yes. Can you hear me? Please proceed. Okay, if you can't, then my question is today, tobacco products, there is a point of sale signage, no? You can sell tobacco alcohol products, no? Right? Okay, but is there a sign that says that you're gonna sell it to minors? Because our bill covers that too. Your Honor, may I offer? Yes, Attorney Reggie, please uh, proceed. Uh, because I recall when we were working on the tobacco law, uh, the point of sales uh, requirement is there, that uh, there is a signage that should show that it is prohibited to be sold to minors. Yes. Persons below. So it's a requirement, point of yeah. sales notice. Okay, so it's a requirement today for alcohol and tobacco products. Yes, Your Honor, on point of sales. Yeah, on point of sales. So here we're, we're just trying to align it with that, no? Yes, Your yes. Honor. Okay. My honor, in as much as I'm here, can I? Mr. Uh, Chair, can we ask honor? Attorney Reggie to speak louder or go closer? Because she's lang yung medyo mahina, eh. yung iba malakas naman. Thank yes. you. Yes, please, Thank Attorney you. Reggie. Your Honor, uh, can I be heard now? Yes, yes, please proceed. Okay. Can I be heard now, Your Honor? Yes, we can hear you, Reggie. Okay, uh, Your Honor. Uh, uh, just an added comment on the use of the phrase scientifically substantiated in the provision. Uh, may, may I offer that it should be more specific because this has been used loosely. For example, clinical uh, studies is being used in terms of uh, some uh, uh, formulations, but uh, it, the clinical studies or clinical trials does not conform to what it should be. For example, uh, Clinical studies should mean that it is peer reviewed and published in the proper medical journals. So uh, I, I, I would defer to the health experts, but the term scientifically substantiated should be more defined, to be specific, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Any other comments on this uh, section? Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I was going to come, Arnie Carino from uh, Philip Philip Morris. <laughs> Well, we will recognize Arnie. If I may be allowed. Yes, Arnie, Arnie, we will recognize we will recognize you, but after you it will be Dr. Anna of the FDA and Dr. Gonzalez. Please proceed. Yes, uh, I was going to make a comment earlier on uh, product communications. Um, I just wanted to say that you know a point of sale and other forms of commun consumer communication are very important 
for without it, smokers will never find out um, that these alternatives exist. And it's really a hallmark of consumer protection, the right to know. Um, so I think having having said this, you know, we, we support uh, those bills that allow for um, product communication um, at point of sale, um, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Anna of the FDA. Uh, thank you, Chair, for allowing us to comment on product communication. For, so for the FDA, it is clear in the regulations in RA 9711 that if there are any claims, uh, the, the company needs to substantiate these claims and they should have the scientific evidence to uh, back up their claims uh, for their products. This is to ensure that the consumers are not misled into believing that these products are uh, can reduce the harm. And uh, this should be based on available evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Gonzalez. Good morning. Thank you again, Senator. Uh, for a pediatrician, we have been monitoring the sale of electronic cigarettes way back in 2017 and even before pre-pandemic. Children are very visual and we can see all of these uh, products in the youth access area uh, to say uh, there are electronic cigarette stores in front of Jollibee, in front of near supermarket entrance, in front of... Um, What's this hardware, the popular hardware, and even uh, in front of the bookstores. So even if the children cannot read that, but the fact that this point of sale is near the access of this youth, it attracts them. And you've seen how visual these children are. So aside from the point of sales, even the location should be studied so that we can protect our children. And we are sending also signals that smoking and vaping is just normal when you reach that point of maturity. Whatever, however, what we look at it, they are still vices and they should not be part of growing up of our children. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Ben of Health Justice. Your Honor, thank you very much for, for this chance to speak. Uh, for, for Health Justice, our position is that all forms of advertisements, promotion, and sponsorships of electronic cigarettes, um, including online and point of sale advertisements and signages, should be absolutely prohibited. Uh, this is consistent, Your Honor, with the e-cigarettes and HTB industry's position during the legislative hearing in Congress uh, two years ago when we were discussing RE11346 and RE11467. That their, e their products are actually just marketed only for smokers as cessation device. It should be the industry that should be burdened in terms of marketing their products not the state when we have youth that are uh, going to be addicted with their product furthermore uh, your honor direct and indirect sponsorships and promotions of e-cigarettes through what is known as vaping events should also be prohibited to halt the popularity of the use of these products your honor because they're very much present in youth events and we want to also prevent that your honor Yes. So, in effect, we're discussing now Section 11, 12, and 13. Huh? They're all interrelated. Okay. So, Mr. Dongueto, PLCPD, wanted to speak? Yes, sir. Thank you, Thank you again for this uh, opportunity. Uh, Mr. Chair, the Food and Nutrition Research Institute in 2019 reported that one in five users of e-cigarettes in the country is below the age of 19. So the uptake, really, no, the uptake of young people to these products is uh, is very high, and there is clear and present danger on the health of children, on the health of our children and young people. So our position, no? we, we think that we should prohibit all forms of advertising, promotion, and sponsorship, including the ones, Mr. Chair, that are done online. No? in line with the efforts of making these products inaccessible to children and youth, and we should not allow any form of advertisement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, 
LCUP President, uh, yes. Antoine Israel, yes? Yes, at tungkol naman po dun sa mga events, point of sale advertising, wala po kami tutul doon. Dapat nga po magkaroon ng mga point of sale advertisements and information na nakakatulong. Dahil lang isang vape shop ay marami pong variety na ino-offer. At hindi po alam ng mga vape goers kung alin doon ang nararapat para sa kanila. Partikular kung ang dose ng kanilang juice ay dapat angkop pa sa kanila or everything. Now, tungkol po dun sa enticement, dun sa youth, I don't think in magiging issue yun. Dahil ang vape shop is already a gated facility. Hindi man nung papapasukin yung 18 kung yun ang sinasabi ng batas. Hindi rin magpapapasukin yung 21. Kung merong mga events, mga fairs, ang lahat ng pupunta ron ay expected mga vapers lang at walang mga bata. Yun lamang pong akin. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tony Flores and, Ms. and Dr. Dorotheo. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. On behalf of the Child Rights Network, thank you again for um, allowing us to speak today. And uh, on these provisions, we would like to manifest that the idea of an e-cigarette should never even touch the consciousness of our children. Their right to survival and development should be our primary concern, and the use of e-cigarettes and next-generation tobacco products is a public health concern. Thus, our position is a comprehensive plan on advertising, promotion, and sponsorships, including those conducted online. In line with the efforts of making this product inaccessible to minors, we should also not allow any form of advertisement to reach our children. It has also been observed that advertising and promotion of these products are directly catered to the youth through their sleek and modern designs. Yeah. And so we uh, push for comprehensive plan. Thank you very much. Yeah, but no one is suggesting that. No? None in the bill is suggesting that. Huh? Okay, so we're looking at section 11, 12, and 13. Huh? Okay. Uh, okay, Attorney Rafael? Yes, Attorney Rafael? Yes, Your Honor, mag yeah, Your Honor maganda umaga po. Uh, Doon po sa proposed bill po ninyo compared to RA 9211, Para mas magaang po yung internet advertising, sir, sa proposed bill po natin. Uh, mas permissive po siya for internet advertising. Um, as to RA9211, uh, it really, internet advertising is prohibited. Uh, yung po mga restricted sites, uh, hindi po, dun lang po pwede makapag-advertise. Whereas, yung po sa proposed bill po, sir, eh, as long as it is, not, it is not targeted to people below 18, Internet advertising is allowed. You know, we just would like to make that manifestation, Your Honor. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Thank you for that. Uh, any other? Uh, Jul? Uh, Mario? From uh, the Jul? Mario? Uh, yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman, just a very short manifestation. Uh, in accordance with our general position on risk proportionate regulations, so our our general position is that uh, rules on these alternative products should not be stricter than that provided for by combustible cigarettes, such that if point of sale advertisements are allowed, for instance, for combustible cigarettes, then we hope, given that these uh, alternative products are new products which need a lot of information for adult smokers to be able to switch to these to these alternatives, then we hope that regulations should not be stricter when imposed to these alternative products. So that's uh, our position, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I, I suppose we discuss. Yes. Who is this? Dr. Doroteo, you called me earlier. Okay, please uh, proceed. Um, so, sir, I just wanted to react to the statements about youth access, no? Um, because even though there are restrictions in place, it's quite clear from the surveys that have been done that youth have access to these products in the same way that while we restrict tobacco products and alcohol products, youth still gain, gain access to these products. Um, but with that said, uh, I actually want to point out that the industry has actually said that these products are not intended for non-smokers or for the youth. Um, and therefore, what is the industry's um, uh, way of proving that they are only selling to smokers? Uh, 
uh, there has been no way to actually document this properly. Uh, when you go to a store, um, it's quite easy to say that I'm a smoker and not have any way to prove it before being sold these uh, new products. And so it is quite easy for non-smokers and youth to have access. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, you also have Mr. Rodley Carza of the DOH. Yes, Mr. Yes, Sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would just like to put on record the position of the Department of Health that we uh, we propose any form of advertising sponsorship and uh, promotional activities to be prohibited. Mr. Thank you, Pop. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we move on. Uh, I think sir, we've had a lot of... Sir, sir, I think Dr. Maricar Limpin would like to be recognized and then I'd like to also say something after. Okay, please, please proceed. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, in behalf of the Philippine College of Physicians, uh, Physicians we would like to uh, officially uh, um, support a prohibition of any form of advertisement, promotion, sponsorships, or any marketing strategies, including uh, internet or online selling. We have seen now the increasing use of e-cigarettes among the young, wherein the recent FNRI uh, study have shown that 19% of our children aged 10 to 19 years of age are now using e-cigarettes. That means if you look at the proportion of e-cigarettes smokers uh, in the young, it is three times higher even no, compared to those who are using standard cigarettes. Uh, these young people are now starting to really uh, go into e-cigarettes and as early as now, we need to put a stop to this pandemic. And we know that marketing, advertising, and promotions are one very effective means of reaching out to this young. The industry has said that they are not targeting the young, and yet we see many of their activities, marketing activities, directed towards the young. So we are, uh, we do not want any any form of advertisement, to Your Honor. And I hope that uh, we will consider this for the sake of our children. Thank you, Senator Pia. You're now uh, Yes, um, Mr. Yes, Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair. It's an echo. Someone. Echo. Someone's. Okay. Um, I want to. I want to think out. Can you hear me? Because there's an echo. It might interfere yeah, okay. with your understanding. My okay. I, I just wanted to share also again when I visited the UK. Um, I wanted to do my own ocular inspection. No, so I was with my staff. We were there for a few days. And we kept forgetting, we were already in the airport, and we realized that we were never able to to purchase or to even look at uh, an e-cigarette product in the convenience stores. I'll tell you why. It's not that we did not enter a convenience store. We did. Siguro mga twice a day, you know, you'd buy bottled water, whatever. We entered the convenience store a number of times each day. However, bawal ang point of purchase display. You cannot sell e-cigarettes there. So every time we entered, we did not think of, we were not reminded, our senses were not bombarded with images of the products. And that is why I personally am such a strong supporter of no point of purchase display of products because I experienced it myself. I had it on my to-do list. I was supposed to at least look at or maybe try to purchase a product, but I kept on forgetting because I could not see it. So that is why I feel so strongly about no point of purchase display. Um, the second point I want to make is on advertisements no, or sponsorships. Uh, my bill calls for a total ban. And the reason for this is you cannot differentiate between a 19-year-old who's endorsing it versus an 18-year-old or a 21-year-old or a 25-year-old. Come on. We all know that it is aspirational for the youth to look up to those older than them. Unlike, like I said, in the UK where they have already cut the time, they have made smoking undesirable for the youth or so they claim uh, because they do not see any uptake at all. Okay, so unless we're at that point, 
the ban should stay permanently. So I was a little bit surprised um, when uh, when uh, one of the resource persons from uh, NCUP mentioned that uh, the event, he, he mentioned vaping events. And I was like, what, what, what is the vaping event? Can we ask him to elaborate? Because what is the objective here to promote vaping? Why, why would there be a vaping event? Again, if it is meant to be a cessation tool, by all means, go for it. Um, you know, do what you have to do, but register, as FDA has already mentioned. Now, if this is a vaping event, na merong kumakanta, na merong concert, what is the point? Um, may I get? Uh, I would like to get clarified on that. No, yung mga vaping events, yun po ay mga inay, yeah, ino organize na mga vaping ng vaping community to welcome only vapers or ex-smokers to get oriented dun sa mga products na sino showcase nila. Ito po ay mga vaping events na ito ay gated events. Hindi po nila pinapapasok yung mga uh, young looking o yung mga minor di edad na wala po sa saktong edad. So ito po ay targeted events na para lamang po dun sa mga vapers. So yun po ang aking uh, dais kong i-emphasize Mas ging ang mga vape shops so eh meron na po silang sense of responsibility na sinusunod. Ay mga nasa counter kilala ho nila yung mga customer nila kung nakakita ho sila ng bata hindi ho nila pinagbibigyan maliban sa ibang mga sitwasyon. Natuto naman na meron ding nagbebenta doon sa mga minor de edad. Hindi rin po maiiwasan yun. Well, Mr. Mr. Chair, I, I'll uh, I'll leave it at that for now. No, I won't take it up now, but I think this kind of events have to be extremely extremely regulated because uh the reality there is they welcome new vapors people who have never smoked before and i've already seen it on social media na may pa post post pa tagging a friend welcome to the vaping world what's that supposed to mean welcome to to a world that will also kill you but in a different way and there's no scientific proof that it's safe so i i i, I take very strong uh uh, I have very strong objections about this uh, vaping uh, community events. But again, they could take up at, at the right time. Um, I just post my objections right now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Let me ask the Secretariat to note that, uh, um, I guess for lack of time, uh, the other resource persons were giving a thumbs up to my statement. Importante yan, kasi it's like, it's like putting on record that uh, they support it. They, they support the the statement that I was making. So, iiwan nyo na lang yung thumbs up nyo para ma-record yan ng, uh, ng secretariat natin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Pia. Uh, let's move on. The next section is use in public place. Uh, let's take that together with uh, designated vaping areas. Okay. Uh, any comments on the use in public place? Section 14 and designating vaping areas. Are there any comments? Uh, I see most, most are in agreement here. Yes. Uh, yes, Your Honor, from Health Justice, Attorney Ben, we are in support of the proposal of the good Senator Pia Caetano in terms of the regulation on the use of these products in public places because there's a need to legislate regulation and where the products uh, are being used because the use of e-cigarettes should be absolutely banned in all public places. Uh, and this is also consistent no, with the statement of the president to ban uh, the use of these products in public places so as not to undermine the progress we already have in terms of our smoke-free campaign, Your Honor. And this is also in support with the statement of Senator Bongo a while ago that uh, smoke-free places should include vape-free places, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, any other comments on this? Yes, um, yes Arnie Carino. Yes, Arnie, please proceed. Yes, um, yes Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Uh, just background in, in public place uh, definition, smoking in public places has been sort of like um, there's a lot of confusion. But if you look at um, the Tobacco Regulation Act for cigarettes, the definition of a public place is actually an enclosed um, area. And in that same law, um, there is an absolute prohibition in certain public places like hospitals, um, schools. Um, food preparation areas, gasoline stations, stairwells. So there's an exclusive list. 
Um, and we, we support that regulation. Our, our, our view here is that at the very least, um, the public place use restriction for heated tobacco products should be no more restrictive um, than that provided for cigarettes. Because again, the approach, the, the policy approach here should be to encourage um, adult smokers who would otherwise continue to smoke to switch to these products. Now, if we try to limit um, the places where they can use these products, and on the, while at the same time, those for cigarette use are more lenient, then um, they might just defer back to using um, cigarettes. And that's one thing that we want to avoid. So that's my first point. Um, my second point, uh, Mr. Chair, is that we don't want to put um, smokers and those who have switched um, to heated tobacco products in one room. Um, because we know that these products are fundamentally different. One has combustion, the other one has absence of combustion. Um, so I, I hope that the, the committee can make sure that, you know, um, three, there would be different play, uh, or establishments will be allowed to uh, put up separate designated smoking areas and designated um, vaping areas. And then my last point, um, Mr. Chair here is really on private establishments. We, our view here is that private establishment owners should be given the leeway to establish their own designated <laughs> vaping areas. And again, the approach here is really to nudge those adult smokers who would otherwise continue to smoke to switch um, to heated tobacco products or, or vaping products. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Any other yeah. on this issue? Yes. Uh, Minority Leader Frank uh, Delot, yes, please proceed. Yes, Mr. Chairman, just a question. For the purposes of implementation, shouldn't we have only one rule? If you're going to smoke in this place, you're going to vape in this place. They were more simply. Kaisa, you know, one rule for vaping, one rule for cigarette. If you cannot smoke here, you cannot vape here. You cannot have e-cigarettes uh, here. You cannot have either. So in other words, for purposes of implementation and easier enforcement, let's all have, have only one rule, whatever yeah. it is applicable. Yeah. Yes. Right. Well, frankly speaking, most of the regulations here are written that way. Yeah. If you, if you were to read the bill, most of the regulations here are written that way, no? So, in the case of uh, uh, vaping areas and smoking areas in a private establishment, the only suggestion is that they, they be two separate rooms, if at all. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. One for vaping and one for smoking. But there's no mandate. Walang <laughs> pilitan. Okay. That's up to the private establishment. Uh, any other concerns on this uh, section? Yes, uh, Dr. Lim. Yes, uh, I'd like to manifest uh, your honor that uh, we would like to probably uh, we support the uh, the bill uh, proposed by Senator Pia Cayetano, wherein uh, uh, vaping will not allow, be allowed in any uh, indoor areas, and that we have to be mindful of the uh, research, scientific evidence that showed that um, the vape aerosol uh, uh, contains the, exactly almost the same uh, chemicals that are also found in cigarette smoke. So, uh, and this, among all these chemicals, this includes many that are known toxic and poisonous as, uh, as evidenced by uh, the list of chemicals you know, that have been found to be toxic and chemicals by the US FDA in 10, 2012. And also many of these chemicals, your honor, contain carcinogens. So meaning these are cancer causing agents. And therefore, what uh, what the industry would be saying that, that they are the harm 
is no real evidence that will tell us that that, that uh, these e-cigarettes and these heated tobacco products are less harmful. The, the fact remains that all these products are still harmful and not safe, and therefore exposing our people to this vape aerosol smoke will not uh, bring any uh, good no, to the health of the, of the Filipino people. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any other? Dr. Doroteo, Dr. Gonzalez, and uh, yes. So the two? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to support Dr. Limpin um, and other health advocates in really emphasizing that allow uh, the use of these products in indoor public places and workplaces and public transportation. Rather than providing for an exclusive list, uh, the protection should be universal because we have a universal right to health. And therefore, the prohibition on the use of these products should be an inclusive provision rather than an, providing an exclusive list. And even though uh, there is reference to RA9211, we actually are of the position that RA 9211 needs to be amended so that there is also a wider restriction of smoking in public places. And therefore, that should not be an excuse for us to restrict uh, the use of ENS and HTPs and make them less uh, restrictive than for cigarettes. So, um, there are many problems with RA 9211. That's not a good comparison for for regulating ENS and HTPs. Um, and if we prohibit their, their use in public places, this protects the public, um, and this is already scientifically proven, um, particularly by indoor air experts, um, including in engineers in the US. And like the, uh, Senator Drillon said, it is also going to ease the enforcement of these restrictions when there is only one rule where you cannot vape or smoke in public later. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, FDA Director Ana Rivera, thereafter, uh, Ms. Giselle of Philip Morris. FDA Director Ana Rivera. Rick Gonzalez, yes, please proceed. Thank you, Senator. Uh, the, goal, uh, the goal of tobacco control has always been to quit, not shift. So we are sending signals here with the regulation that it's okay for smokers to shift, where in fact the hazards are still there. Now, it is also a known fact that e-cigarettes also has the second-hand aerosol and third-hand aerosol. They are hygroscopic and they stick to walls and any of those uh, hygroscopic materials. And where do these kids usually take in their vaping? Inside the classroom, inside their rooms. So this is actually sending wrong signal to our youth that this, the DVA is actually an alternative place for them to smoke. So if we really want to protect our children, having DVA sends a wrong signal. Diba may kasabihan po tayo na kung ano ang nakikita ang ng bata, yan ang tama. If we put that into actuation, having DVA, then we are just sending wrong signals to our children that this habit is actually good for them. Thank you po. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Ana Rivera. Sir, with regards to DVA, may we manifest that uh, there should be um, um, some restrictions, especially in this time of pandemic, and uh, e-cigarettes, as has been previously mentioned, contains toxic aerosols, and this would contribute to the indoor air quality of the area, and in, at this time of the pandemic, we should consider that restrictions should be in place to ensure that the, uh, not only the effects of the e-cigarettes but also the infection coming or the possibility of in, uh, infection or com uh, communicable diseases proliferating because of the e-cigarettes should also be um, diminished or reduced. Thank you, Your Honor. 
Thank you, uh, Giselle or Philip Morris. You're recognized. Sure. Um, I just wanted to uh, provide a little bit of clarification. I mean, first starting with Philip Morris um, in the Philippines is not planning to make any health claims, but I think it's important that the science and what we know about what is in the aerosol is also very clear, especially to this group here. So when we look at things, the aerosol, is there a secondhand aerosol being answered? That is yes. But when you compare it to a cigarette, a cigarette is burning and is being emitted the entire time a cigarette is being used. When you heat a product, the aerosol being released is being released only when you exhale. Because you're inhaling and then you're exhaling. So is there something in the air? Yes. But then you have to look at the comparison of what is being exhaled and what is the second hand aerosol from an e-cigarette or a heated tobacco product and how does that compare to a cigarette? So is there some chemicals in the air? The answer Definitely yes, but when you compare it to what's in the air from a cigarette, it's definitely reduced. There are plenty of studies on this done by independent groups as well as within the tobacco industry. These have been presented to many regulators around the world, including in the US to the FDA, but also to regulators in Europe, other in um, Japan. And I think it's important that when you see policy, Obviously, where you can't smoke, you should not be allowed to use these types of products. But where smoking does occur, it's also important to differentiate the differences in the toxins being emitted, which ones are, which ones aren't, and the levels of them, because that's important for the smokers to be aware of when they're making the switch and also to encourage them to make the switch. Thank you, and thank you, Giselle. Uh, Peter Dator of Vapors Philippines. Peter? Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I would just like to manifest that um, the, the definition of a public place was already included in the EO that was published by the president. Um, we just don't want to confuse the public. Um, but also, um, we support also what Ms. Giselle just said earlier, that there should be a distinction. So hopefully um, the establishments that we are looking at where we will have the VNDS, the designated uh, vaping places will actually be separate from the, uh, the, the public places designated for uh, smokers because we, you know, we don't want to be exposed with the, uh, with the carcinogens from, the, from smokers. <laughs> Okay, thank you for that. Uh, this uh, okay. Uh, let's hear from Joey Dulay. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would just like to manifest our support for the section 14 and 15 of the recto bill. Um, it is also important for us vapors na hindi po kami maisama sa ano no, sa isang kwarto with smokers kasi uh, ang major decision nga namin is to switch away from smoking. We don't want to ano no, to to go back to smoking by uh, putting us inside the room uh, with all the smoke and uh, the harmful substances that uh, smoking uh, uh, provides. No? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Joey. Um, okay, so I suppose the next issue for discussion. No? Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just wanted to um, also comment on this provision, but also on the previous previous provision on um, advertising and sponsorship, I forgot to mention. Um, it's very important, Mr. Chair, that we address uh, what is a current um, strategy of the uh, e-cigarette companies. Uh, I, I, I feel very strongly that there should be a ban in uh, their promoting their products in medical communities. Um, if they really are going to if they want, if the intention is to share whatever benefit there is, then that should be a highly regulated discussion. The presence of DOH, FDA, uh, or whatever other safeguards need to be present should be there because, again, as I said, unless it is registered as a cessation device, then they have no business promoting it as such. So I, I can tell you, um, I can share it. I'll put this, I'll put this on record. There is a Manila Times uh, article um, that uh, showed that um, 
these groups um, had an event with the um, Philippine College of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons, basically dentists, uh, and their whole their 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 angle was um, preventing uh, um, oral cancer. So whether that's true or not, that's not for me to decide. That's for the scientific community to decide, and they have no business promoting their product that way, unless they have clearance that they can make those kind of statements. So Mr. Chair, I use it as an example because this is extremely dangerous. We have experts here, Philippine Pediatric Society, Philippine um, um, College of Surgeons, but it is true and you can ask the doctors, I'll ask them to speak whether now or later. Uh, not, not, every, not every health professional knows these things. So these people have no business explaining something that they have no clearance about they will be confusing even professionals and again i'd like to uh, ask the secretary to take note of the uh the thumbs up and uh whatever use of uh this is now a valid use of uh, a valid expression of support thumbs up and whatever clapping that uh, is on record now in our um uh video hearing no uh second point i move on um, the second point is on the designated areas, and I'd also like to point out that um, one of the um, uh, manner of uh, of um, enticing people to to become um, vapors or uh, HTP uh, smokers is um, by creating these lounges, para an exclusive lounge, maybe similar similar to the, the similar what was explained kanina, like mga exclusive events exclusive lounges for these users. So if the point is to help them support, why do you need an exclusive lounge? Clearly the objective here is to make this a lifestyle. And again, it becomes aspirational for the youth na wow, air condition, ang gaganda ng mga upuan, social na social. Tapos meron pang free coffee. Again, I saw this in, in London, in the United Kingdom. So. Yung aking provision on this, itong um, um, designated vaping areas, I specifically put there no chairs. Not that naman gusto kong pahirapan, but then again, ha, let me add, uh, sitting <laughs> is the new smoking, okay? May kasabihan na ganon. Um, so this is not meant to prejudice anyone. Obviously, if there's someone who cannot stand, that's not meant to uh, affect them in, a, in that way. But it's meant not to be a lounging area, okay? If, if you are truly... Um, using using this device uh, as an alternative to to smoking, then just get your fix and leave. It's not meant to be sitting around, relaxing, enjoying. Hindi yun ang objective. So mega ng provision in my bill, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we go on to the next issue, Mr. Chair. Just one. Uh, the next issue, Mr. Chair. Will... Just one manifestation. Uh, please do it quick because we've heard a lot on this issue already at the moment, Eric. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is yeah. Yes, Mr. Chair, particularly for uh, what uh, Senator Pia Caetano said, because with the universal health care law, we have actually been very strict now with engagement with pharmaceutical companies attending conferences and then giving lectures and uh, talking about the goodness of their products. No? And that is for legitimate pharmaceuticals. So I'd like to support Senator Pia Cayetano's point that, you know, we should not allow them, uh, peddlers of nicotine products, to attend medical conferences and give lectures to medical students or healthcare professionals. I just wanted to make that point, Mr. Senator. Okay. Um, okay, thank you very much. So the next point is another major issue, but I think we should take them all together already. No? Section 16 on product notification because here, jurisdiction is already mentioned, the DTI, no? Uh, so, Section 16, Section 17, Section uh, 20, and Section 18, okay? So these four sections are all interrelated and has jurisdiction too, okay? Whether it should be the FDA, or the DTI, or uh, an interagency to regulate the product, the heated tobacco and vape products. So let's open this to discussion. Can we hear first from the FDA and the DTI? Yes, uh, FDA, you, yeah. Yeah, bingo, please proceed. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, uh, nicotine is uh, classified as a drug, you know. 
when it's purified and then it's delivered in a way that will it will be absorbed into the body, it's like any other drug. It has physiologic, short-term, and long-term effects. That's why we believe that you know we have to uh, subscribe with the provisions of RA one one four six seven and EO one o six, which are new and are be uh, have been approved very recently, putting the regulation of such products under the FDA. Kasi po talagang hindi naman siya katulad ng ibang consumer products. Ito pinapasok sa katawan ito at may epekto siya sa katawan. Kung yun nga po mga child care products, pagkain, supplements, nire-regulate pa ng FDA, lalo na po ito na mayroong physiologic effect na might be long-lasting. Ano? And as a matter of uh, something practical, Mr. Chair, uh, I have to tell everybody that you know, the FDA has been working for the past few years already on the regulatory structure of this. We are ready to license uh, manufacturers, retailers, distributors. We are ready to accept applications for notification and registration of these products. And this is something that takes a lot of time. Kung ililipat na naman po, eh parang napakahirap. And I'm sure the Department of Trade does not have the uh, the experience no, with regulating products, which are very, very similar to food and drugs. So thank you for that. Uh, can we hear from the DTI? Oh yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, there are two things here to talk about: the the liquid or the refillable matter, and then the device. Um, DTI is just uh, regulating the device, Mr. Chair. We are actually preparing for testing equipment on the on HTTP devices, Mr. Chair. We are not certifying the the refillable product, but the device itself. And that is the point that we were trying to raise earlier, Mr. Chair, that if this is going to be allowed, well, whether online or offline, sellers should um, make it clear that the products are licensed and then show the license so that consumers or buyers will be able to verify if the device has already uh, passed certification process and testing by the department, Mr. Chair. Yes. Ruth, uh, just one question. No? Uh, tobacco products today are regulated by the DTI, uh, an interagency headed by the DTI, is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chair, there is an interagency committee on tobacco products uh, chaired by the department, Mr. Chair. And are, is, the, is the FDA a member of that interagency? Yes, Mr. Chair, and the Department of Health. And the Department of Health, okay. Yes, so Chair. now you have two different agencies regulating similar products. Uh, Mr. Chair, the FDA is regulating the the tobacco itself or the liquid uh, tobacco. Uh, the DTI will regulate only the device, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair, as a consumer product, just like all the other uh, uh, products that we regulate and test. Okay. Do you have any comments on uh, the different sections of the bill? With regard oh, to yes, Mr. Chair. please please yes. proceed. Yes, Mr. Chair, we we agree and support the provision uh, in Senate Bill Number 1951, Mr. Chair, allowing a three-month period prior to the sale or manufacturing in the market that they should notify the department. And for all those that are already uh, that are uh, that are already in the market, Mr. Chair, we are allowing them a transitory period of uh, also maybe 18 months or shorter uh, for them to be able to dispose of this pro these products, Mr. Chair, before we um, uh, impose the regulation of the department on the on the devices, Mr. Chair. Yes. Do you have any recommendations with regard to Section 17, product standard requirements for vapor products, refills, devices, and systems? I'd like to ask the same question also to FDA and of course to section for well, section 17 section 18 because the, the this one deals with heated tobacco products uh I'd like to solicit comments from the DTI and the FDA on these two particular sections Oh yes Mr. Chair Mr. Chair, it is our proposal that the, since these uh, two sections are very similar provisions, that they be consolidated 
and maybe uh, revise the title with an intro introductory statement on product standard requirements for vapor products and heated tobacco products, Mr. Chair. Okay, what about the elements in it? You have any we have that? Yes. yes, yes, Mr. Chair. On 17 uh, 17A, um, if the intention of the law will mandatorily prohibit the addition of the substances, Mr. Chair, it is then proposed that we consolidate the two subsections of the Senate bill and revise them to read as follows. Should I continue to read it, Mr. Chair? That's okay, Ruth. That, you can submit that to the committee. We'll do that, Mr. Chair. Thank For you. Sure you'll be part of a technical working group together with the FDA. So, uh, uh, any comments on Section 1718? Uh, Mr. Chair? Uh, uh, I'd like to recognize first uh, FDA Domingo. Uh, no, Mr. Chair, I was going to call Director Anna Rivera for our, which is the head of our Center for Drugs, for our comments on the standards. Yes. Uh, Anna? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we would like to also manifest that the FDA also has the mandate to uh, set product standards, and in this case, for the liquids and refills, um, we would uh, defer the guidelines as uh, we have already uh, coordinated also with the DTI in terms of the devices. Um, so for Section 17, may we request that both DTI and FDA set the standards for these products. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Joey Dulay, uh, could we hear from uh, Joey? Uh, you want to um we would just like to manifest also that uh, we support uh, the bills of uh, senator uh, zubiri and soto and director uh what while we support it uh there is just one section uh, section 17 uh in the restriction of flavors Kasi po, um ang flavors po, uh, uh, I'm talking as a vapor or a, a former smoker who switched to vaping. Uh, flavors has been an important factor for the switch. Uh, and as we we go along and the uh, numerous studies uh, come along that uh, says uh, uh, vaping is less harmful than smoking, yun po ang pinangahawakan namin sa ngayon na kailangan uh, magkaroon naman kami ng konting uh, Anyway, just the adult smokers, no? Just the adult smokers, not, not the committed na smokers and vapors. Na pabigyan naman po ng uh, something, uh, parang uh, incentive to switch away from from smoking, which is uh, very known to have uh, killed uh, millions of people. Yung flavors po, talaga, meron naman po mga studies na pwede namin isubmit to the committee. Uh, we would also like to manifest our desire to to send our uh, studies uh, uh, to the committee yes uh, para mapatunayan po natin na nakakatulong po ang uh, flavors sa uh, sa pag-switch ng isang smoker sa pagbebe okay thank you Joey. Senator Marcos wanted to take the floor uh, Amy no i i just wanted to make a comment and uh, express the sense i think not the, i'm not the first senator to uh, express um, my doubts about the capacity of the FDA to act quickly and efficiently, given the fact that it's truly overburdened with uh, COVID vaccines, uh, and given the record of delay, procrastination, and, uh, and uh, inefficiency, uh, may I say, since there's an alternative, bigay na muna natin sa DTI, may membership naman pala dyan yung FDA at yung DOH, at least for the moment, baka mas kaya naman nila, dahil FDA is truly overburdened. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Ivy. Yes, uh, DG Eric. Uh, yeah, just to make it clear, yeah, we do have backlogs in FDA. Sorry, Dr. Eric. No, yeah, no, but that's with the Center for Drugs. Uh, yun po yun talaga yung mga gamot ang medyo mahaba ang pila. But this one will be lodged in our Center for ano, eh, Cosmetics and Household uh, Substances and other stuff. So, I, I, I think, and especially I, I for think this. you'll have to tell that to Senator Tolentino who has great doubts about that. Great doubts about that. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. Sir Chair. Yes, uh, please proceed. Uh, Dr. Limpin, is that Dr. Limpin? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so this is just to manifest the position of the Philippine College of Physicians that as far as regulating uh, heated tobacco products, the e-cigarettes, we believe that that should fall under the mandate of the Food and Drug Administration. So for most, uh, Mr. Chair, let us uh, remember that the FDA takes its mandate from RA 9711 and under the jurisdiction of the FDA, it includes health products, which refers to food, drugs, cosmetics, devices, which means medical devices, and also health-related devices. So these health-related devices refer to any device not used in healthcare, but has been determined by the FDA to adversely affect the health of the people. So as far as regulating this product and including setting standards you know, for these products, that will refer not only to the chemicals that are being put in the e-cigarettes, but also all the refillables, as well as the device itself. FDA has the capacity. Now, if we want to really make uh, sure that this regulation will be implemented more effectively and properly, wouldn't it be better to have just one agency to regulate these products instead of having too many? So I think, uh, Your Honor, it is best that uh, that this uh, regulation should be kept under the Food and Drug Administration. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Arnie uh, Carino? Yes, uh, Your uh, Mr. Arnie, Chair. Arnie, recognize uh, Mr. Garcia. Yes, okay. Please proceed, Arnie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I hope you don't mind if I may take a few minutes because we're uh, talking about uh, three provisions. Uh, let me just start quickly from... Uh, legal uh, standpoint, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, the, the FDA jurisdiction on uh, heated tobacco products came about um, during a, the, the synthesis deliberation, which uh, from a legal perspective is, uh, is a regulatory rider. Um, but be that as it may, we welcome this discussion because really this is an opportunity to thresh out um, things that weren't discussed during the, the syntax um, debate because uh, that was a, a taxation measure with the regulatory riders on it. Having said that, we recognize that there is that pro still provision of uh, FDA jurisdiction under the syntax law. Uh, but from a legal perspective, that should not be interpreted as having amended all other special laws on tobacco because we have many special laws on tobacco. One is um, Executive Order Number 245. And, and under that EO, that's the charter of the NTA, it specifically provides for the jurisdiction of the NTA for standards for heated tobacco products. So that's first, my first point. Republic Act 9211 also considers heated tobacco products as a tobacco product. So for regulatory purposes, that special law was not also amended by RA 11467. And the provisions therein continue to be legal and valid to this day. The third point is even the FDA law, RA 9711, uh, under Section 25 or 26, I think, expressly that tobacco products, those governed under Republic Act 9211, are not covered or not under the jurisdiction of the FDA. So I just wanted to be clear from a legal standpoint that, you know, this, this multiple special laws on tobacco regulation should be harmonized. I think this is an opportunity uh, for the Senate to do that. Having said that, uh, Mr. Chair, I go now into science. Um, our heated tobacco products in the Philippines are not marketed or commercialized with any health claims. I, I'd like to say they are not cessation products. We never said, uh, there's no document for us saying that we never use it as a, we don't recommend it as a cessation product. It is a consumer product. It's not a health product. 
it is a consumer product, and it is a tobacco product. That's why we don't offer it to non-smokers or especially to the youth or even to former smokers. If you go into our store, we have good conversion practices and we make sure that only those adult smokers who would otherwise continue to smoke this, use these products, that's where we offer them. So, uh, because the, that's very important, uh, Mr. Chair, because if we're looking at the regulatory agency here, a regulatory agency should not be looking this as a health product or a pharmaceutical product because if the government agency will be looking at it from this lens then definitely there will be irreconcilable difference because how how can these products be safe they are never safe in the first place they are never effective in the first place as a pharmaceutical product and this is our where our position comes in our position should be whoever the regulator will be, you know, should have that multifaceted lens that can regulate this product holistically. And I think that's why I think the DTI is the head of the, the interagency committee on tobacco because this, this, um, this industry is multifaceted. We have the concerns of the tobacco farmers, we have the sale, advertising, intellectual property rights of course there is also that that health aspect um so for us the, the any government regulator and we will leave it to the senate to decide should at least have that holistic approach secondly there should be that technical capability and when i say take a technical capability in terms of product standards we have the bureau of product standards as the national setting body of the national um, the people therein are the technical people who are monitoring international developments, international standards, and there is an approach on how we develop product standards. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, the DTI has already issued a product standards for e-cigarettes even before the syntax law was even passed. So I think government agencies like the DTI are already doing their job in terms of product standards development. So I would again um, suggest that we look at agencies who have that technical competency. You know, if you're talking about importation, we have the Bureau of Import Services. If you're talking about intellectual property rights, health warnings, labeling, we have the intellectual property office. And on, on this final point, I would say also that any government agency who should be regulating this should be a balanced regulator. And in the sense, should that have prejudged these um, products already? Because if a government agency is coming from the perspective of a prohibitionist approach, um, then these products would have been prejudged already. So those are some of the parameters that we're hoping that this, uh, the, the Honorable Senate can look into. Um, because it's really important in terms of the jurisdiction that um, we have that balanced regulator. Because at the end of the day, let's not forget, cigarettes will be continued to be sold. And, and that's, that's, the perp that's the public health purpose here we want. We know for a fact that Filipinos will continue smoking. There are 16 million Filipinos out there. And this number hasn't really changed in the past five or six years. And the annual quit rate is around 4%, very, very low. And that, that's the objective here. We want those adult smokers who would want to otherwise continue to use nicotine products to switch to these better alternatives. So if we have, if we go very restrictive on this, or if we have a regulator that does not look at this from that balancing perspective lens, then we would have at least not, we would have, allowed smoking to continue um and again all the smoking related illnesses to continue. so and i appeal to this honorable body to consider that the importance of this jurisdiction when deciding um and as well as those product standards that we will implement let's not forget this should always be pegged versus a cigarette product thank you mr chair thank you uh thank you for that uh the next is uh, Mr. Garcia, then Mr. Dator, 
Uh, then we will have the health advocates. Yes, please proceed. Mr. Garcia, you're on mute. Mr. Garcia, you're on mute. We can't hear you. There. Uh, magandang tanghali po. Uh, clear na po ba? Yes, uh, please proceed. Uh, magandang tanghali po uh, sa lahat ng membro ng komite. Um, ako po pala si Jose Garcia. Ako po yung representative ng Vapor ako. Um, bilang consumer po, sumusuporta po kami sa Senate Bill 1951 ng uh, Senator uh, Recto. Uh, mayroon lang po kaming comment uh, issue dito sa Section 17 tungkol po sa prohibition of flavors. Uh, sa madaling salita po, kung, tatanggal, kung tatanggalin po ang flavors na to, mas lalo na pong mapapahirapan yung mga gustong mag-switch. Uh, sa vaping uh, ganun din po yung mga nakapag-switch na so tama po yung ano ni Sir Joey Dulay tungkol sa flavors uh, mahihirapan po kami sa vaping wala pong flavors ang uh, vape na ginagamit namin uh, maraming salamat po uh, thank you uh, Mr. Dator uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I uh, would just like to make a manifestation that um, in behalf of us, the Vapor's PH, we support the the, uh, the position taken by uh, Arnie earlier that uh, DTI is in a much better position to uh, have jurisdiction over these products. Uh, may isa lang hukrimin concern then, sir. Um, I was in a meeting before with, with, with Congress whereby I think um, it was mentioned there that some fundings from Bloomberg actually goes through uh, certain agencies in the government. So that's something that we also want uh, the, the good committee to also look into because um, we, we already have it on the record that Bloomberg is pushing for banning the vaporized products. So uh, yun lang po sir, yung uh, gusto namin sanang uh, erase as consumers because like myself, I've stuck to one flavor since I've started. So, um, yun lang po. Uh, we just want to put that on record, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Dorotheo, then Dr. Gonzalez, then FDA Director Anna, and then Attorney Ben. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, we would support a ban on flavors because the these flavors are attractive to young people. And the current legislation, as specified in the syntax law, already prohibits and limits um, flavors so that there are only tobacco and, and uh, menthol flavors allowed. Uh, if the intention is really to help smokers to reduce their harm from smoking, uh, then there should be no problem because uh, the most common flavors for cigarettes at the moment are tobacco and menthol. Uh, that said, we actually would support even banning menthol because these are also attractive to young people so that they begin uh, using e-cigarettes and even smoking. On the issue po of um, the FDA jurisdiction, we firmly believe that the FDA uh, is the appropriate agency to regulate these products. Uh, um, it is, uh, we heard from DG Domingo that the FDA is prepared for regulating these products. We also know from our experience uh, that the COVID vaccines are regulated under the FDA because of their mandate under the FDA law. And they are very capable of uh, quick regulation when it is necessary for the public good. Um, it's just that there really is a lot to regulate. No? Um, so I would even put it uh, to the body that the DTI can also be overwhelmed by regulating other products. Um, that said, the health impact of these products is without question. 
And therefore, it is the FDA that should rightfully regulate these products. We heard from Attorney Carino uh, that these are not safe products, that they are harmful, and that's uncontested. And therefore, they really should be regulated by the FDA. Um, in fact, when we think about how tobacco has been regulated under RA 9211 by the Interagency Committee, we know that the regulation, the implementation has not been very effective because we do see the same uh, uh, problems that we had when we began regulating tobacco products. There has been progress, but the progress has been slow. And one of the reasons for this is because the Department of Trade and Industry and through its chairing of the interagency committee has not really put its foot down with regard to tobacco products. So what more with uh, these new products? No? Um, Attorney Carino also pointed out that chips uh, are actually regulated under I-11 as a special law. And it made me wonder why health heated tobacco products do not carry graphic health warnings if they are actually supposed to be regulated as the same as uh, existing tobacco products. Um, so we know they are not cessation devices. The industry has said so much uh, to say that these are not health products. And yet, when they say that smokers should switch for, to these new products, the basis for recommending the switch is because they are supposedly less harmful and therefore reduce the risk to harm. So it is not true to say that these are not health products in the, in the same way that the, uh, we talk about vitamins or medicine, but these are products that have a huge impact on health, both individual health and public health. So regulating these products should put public health as a priority. And I'm sorry to say a balanced regulation should be in favor of the public and public health and not in favor of commercial interests. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez, then uh, Director Anna, Attorney Ben, and uh, Mr. Mata. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in behalf of the children, we have done our nationwide online survey, what makes them uh, take this and initiate the use of it. So that's in February to March 2020. And it, we had a very good population of 11,500 students, grade 7 to 9. And number two in the least, aside from first, is the online accessibility. Second is actually the availability of these varied flavors. Many of these kids and the young have this notion that these are just flavored puffs. Well, in fact, flavoring is a no-no in combination with nicotine because when heated, they also produce toxic chemicals. So unregulated flavors sends out a wrong signal to children that these are just flavored products. And then the second is we do approve the regulation should be for FDA. We have to take note that the e-cigarette epidemic in the United States, they have recognized their failure because they have never regulated, the e-cigarettes e was never regulated by FDA in the first place. Shall we allow the e-cigarette epidemic among our kids? Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Attorney Ben? I'm sorry, Anna Rivera, Director Anna of FDA. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, uh, may we reiterate that the flavors are not just flavors. These are chemicals that were in inhalational exposure. So these chemicals have toxicities and health effects. So examples of these flavor chemicals would include your aldehydes, your formaldehydes, which are carcinogens, acetaldehydes, acrylane, propionaldehyde and diacetyls. So as far as the jurisdiction is concerned, um, the FDA law or RA 9711 mandates that the FDA takes charge of products that have effects on health. And this is clearly stated also in the preamble or in the in section two of the four 
proponents of these regulations in its declaration of policy. And may I state that it is hereby declared that the policy of the state is to promote and protect the right to health of the Filipino people and instill health consciousness among them. And since uh, we consider it as uh, something or these products that have some effects on health, therefore, FDA should have this jurisdiction. And in terms of the performance of the FDA, may we inform the committee that sometime before we had the um, temporary restraining order, we have already started licensing establishments and to inform the committee that we observed the ease of doing business and our performance in terms of the licensing is that on the average we turn out uh, one LTO in nine days. So we this is within the 20 days um, that we have uh, our timelines in terms of uh, the license to operate. So again, FDA is ready to regulate, and we hope that the committee also sees this as um, um, the future of this regulation. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you. Uh, just one question, uh, FDA Director. No? Uh, are heated tobacco products and vape products less harmful than tobacco products? What is the thinking of the FDA here? So based on the evidence, based on the scientific evidence, there is reduction in the exposure. But in terms of harm, especially in the long term, we still don't know. There is a paucity of evidence or dirt of evidence because uh, it only started in the, in the early 2000s. And in terms of the, our endpoints, if we try to say that the endpoint is cancer, it would take 20 years before we find out whether this type of product can already cause cancer. So as of this time, there are a lot of uncertainty factors. And if we add on uh, the different flavors, then we have to monitor each and every impact of this flavor to help because each and every chemical would have different impacts to help. Yes. Uh, so based on your answer, Partially, you are also saying it is less harmful. There is less exposure, Your Honor, not Thank harmful. You. We cannot okay. say that okay. it is Thank less that. harmful. Yes. Thank you for that. There is cancer in this product and there is cancer in this product, so we cannot say there is less cancer in this product. Yes, so we're not saying that. Okay. Thank okay. you for that. Thank you, sir. Okay. Attorney Ben of Health Justice. Uh, thank you very much, you Your Honor, for this chance. Um, Health Justice Po is a tobacco control advocacy group, and based on our tobacco control experience and as supported po by scientific studies, flavor on tobacco products is particularly attractive to children and young adults. 81% of youth and 86% of young adult ever tobacco users reported that their first product was flavored versus 54% of adults. So in terms of vaping, Your Honor, we have data saying that three-fourths of young vapors choose flavored e-cigarettes with fruit and can candy being the top two choices. That's why youth are most likely to use flavors based from fruit and candies that than adults. So we will also submit these studies, Your Honor, to the Honorable Committee for their consideration. From a legal standpoint, naman po, Your Honor, it's our position that RA 11467 is clear in giving FDA the jurisdiction to regulate these products and that the repealing clause of the syntax law, this syntax law is sufficient to have amended other laws inconsistent with this superseding law. Otherwise, Congress would have indicated that in the law. Thus, Your Honor, we support the position that FDA should be allowed and supported in implementing these regulatory measures. We should remember, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, that the full implementation of the law is still by May 2022, and now we're uh, already discussing the amendments today. That's why, Your Honor, what we want to do is to uh, give FDA a chance and support them with the necessary funding to exercise their mandate. It is in their charter to regulate harmful substances, and it is in RA 11467 that this mandate is reinforced and is strengthened. Thank you very much, po, Your Honor. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mata? Thank you, Your Honor. 
uh, we would like to uh, to manifest also that we find the Senate Bill 1951 up to date and aligned with this recent scientific and academic developments on tobacco harm reduction. This being said, also to raise concerns on the Section 17, which prohibits fruit flavors, nuts, coffee, tea, vanilla, and caramel, caramel flavors. Uh, flavored liquids as an advocate for sustainable sustainable ways of quitting the smoking habit prohibition of these flavors will be counterproductive and will in effect keep the smokers from switching to better alternatives those we respectfully propose that this provision prohibiting prohibiting flavors be removed banning flavors outright would in fact amount to a prohibition of vapor products because vapor products are inherently flavored products okay research tells us that non-tobacco flavors are extremely important to adults who are trying to veer away from smoking combustible combustible uh, cigarettes there are many international studies and we would like to submit to your committee proving that flavors in vapor products help smokers quit combustible cigarettes and they are not as harmful as tobacco tobacco cigarettes i can send the studies after this hearing and through our position paper to be submitted later on let me stress that flavors are not the problem it is the combustion we find in smoking at, uh, combustible tobacco it is where we get the smoking related diseases the ill effects of such immediate ban are far-reaching this may increase health risks as it encourages them to seek out combustible cigarettes or to access the black market i hope though that the the points i've made thus far that it has been made clear to everyone that we need to avoid this scenario at all costs this is uh this has this has a very uh, uh dangerous uh, health uh, risk to undertake Thank you. Uh, Yusek uh, Castello from uh, DTH. Uh, Mr. Chair, we express support for the limitation on the flavors, Mr. Chair, to the two most common limitations. We understand that um, uh, candy flavors or fruit flavors are a big attraction to young people and those who have not started smoking, Mr. Chair will might be prevented from starting to smoke so we support this mr chair as to the medical device that um that have been proposed to be tested by dti or or for standards to be imposed or implemented by the dti mr chair we it was mentioned earlier that we have the uh, Bureau of Philippine Standards as the Philippine Standards body. So just as similar as the, our testing capability for other electronic products, we are also preparing uh, for uh, testing of the device, not the tobacco, Mr. Chair. We just want to emphasize that we have no capability on the tobacco or the refill, but we do have strong capability as, as to the device, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, at this juncture, I think we've discussed already um, basically almost all the sections of the different bills. Major points of discussion, no? Which was eight, yeah, I, I will recognize you, Senator Pia, right after this. Um, we've discussed age restriction. We've discussed online trade. We've discussed flavors. We've discussed health warnings. We've discussed product notification, license to operate, product registration, and we've discussed regulatory agency jurisdiction. Okay, I think those are the six most important issues uh, incorporated in the four bills that we're discussing. No, at this juncture, no one is prevented from submitting your pro uh, position papers, and we have requested all of you to provide the committee with your position papers written. Uh, unfortunately, I do have another meeting to attend to, just like many others. But before, before I'd like to thank all our resource persons and members of the committee and authors of the different bills for being present this morning. But before I end our discussion today, may I again recognize Senator Pia for the uh, last words. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 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 Thank you, Mr.
Thank you, Senator Pia. Please proceed. Thank you. Actually, Mr. Chair, this is very quick questions. Yes or no questions lang naman do sa dalawang uh, nagsalita, no? For Mr. Yeah. Arnie Carino, you're a lawyer, sir? Are you a lawyer? Yes, Paul. Yes, you're a lawyer. So may I remind you that uh, your statement that uh, uh, our law, the syntax law, cannot amend an EO is incorrect. And you should know that. So I won't go into the details, but you made that statement. The law is the law, okay? Any any amend, uh, any EO, no matter how lengthy or how uh, detailed it is, can be amended by a uh, law, not 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 the other way around. So just to be clear about that. So the syntax law stands. And I'd like to reiterate my position that it is a very new law. Um, I regret that uh, the way Mr. Carino uh, positioned his uh, statement is that it was not well discussed. It was well discussed. I can assure you of that because I was chair of the Committee on Health for nine years. So before we brought it to the floor, we had lengthy discussions and I've always made it clear that tax regulation is a means to uh, attain our our health objectives. So that was very clear. So please do not say that uh, it was not well discussed. Okay. Um, next point. Um, I'd also like to make it clear, uh, this had to do with his statement as well, among others, that there is a pending case in court because the FDA law, which is also my law, which passed almost 10 years ago, was questioned by the, the cigarette companies because they do not want DOH or FDA to regulate this very sinful and harmful product called tobacco. So even way back before e was in the picture, they already filed the case to prevent the FDA from getting jurisdiction over this. So that is the reason why pati ito. That's the reason because of your lobby. I, 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 I do not um, hesitate to say that because clearly uh, these tobacco companies did not want to be regulated by by uh, the FDA and that's why they filed the case. It's black and white. No? So the reason why we have this division is because ayaw niyo magparegulate sa FDA. So next next question is for Mr. Lorenzo Mata. Sir, are you a doctor? Mr. Yes, Mata, are you a doctor? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma you are a doctor? Yes. Okay, so you have a difference in opinion with the other doctors about uh, the harmful effect of flavor. So let's just yes. let's just uh, pick that off yes, record. Because... If I don't... Yeah, I, I don't need an explanation, sir. I just wanted to understand where you were coming from when you were making statements yes. about flavors not being harmful and yes. the dangerous health risks. We can go into that later. Not that I, I'd like to respect the time of the chair and the time of everyone else. So um, I, I respect your opinion. I don't agree, but I respect your opinion because you're a doctor and if that's what you want to say, that that's in your opinion. Um, so, Mr. Chair, I'd like to thank you for a very uh, well-organized and orderly uh, hearing. I appreciate that uh, all our resource persons were given a chance to express their views. I also learn intently from both sides. Please make no mistake. Yes, I am a dedicated health advocate, but I attend any event that I am invited to to further educate myself on these products, whether it's from a, uh, a um, sales and distribution regulatory perspective, or from the disagreeing provisions on health, I always listen. And that is the reason why I was in the United Kingdom. One last point uh, that I want to mention, I mentioned the uh, the, um, the university that uh, had a resource person speak about um, e-cigs and vapes. And what he pointed out to us was that even though the numbers showed that the uptake of cigarettes declined when people started using e-cigs and vapes, it is no difference from the decline that was seen when they used other cessation devices. So there was no conclusion, at least in the London or the UK data that was presented to us to show that there was more of a shift or a, uh, um, a decrease in the use of cigarettes simply because of uh, the e cigs and vapes. Because these people were also either using other devices or separately the, uh, it was not taken into consideration how effective the other cessation devices were. Which brings me back to my point. You keep The industry keeps on insisting that it is not meant to be a cessation device. It should be monitored by DTI. But yet, without saying the word cessation, you are marketing it as a cessation device. So that is the point I'd like to make. Again, thank you, Mr. Chair, for this very uh, informative and well-organized hearing. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Pia. Thank you for your concern.
and to all our resource persons, marami salamat for educating us in the committee. We appreciate your presence and uh, your participation. Uh, we look forward to looking at your and reading your position papers on the matter. But like I said, I think most of the major issues have been discussed. We will review your position papers moving forward. I am sure we will be creating a technical working group. Uh, and that will also include uh, the authors of the different bills uh, which we discussed today. So also to the minority leader for his interest in this measure. Uh, again, thank you very much. Good afternoon to, to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.